waited one year. All that's left now is 60 minutes of football. It's the dream of a lifetime. No more words, no more talking. 60 minutes and the issue will be settled. It's number one against number two. Oklahoma versus Miami. Oklahoma's Brian Bosworth has written a different headline each day this week. Today, he writes ours. They're going to drag me off this field because it's going to be war. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's going to be 60 minutes of, of nothing but that. And uh, uh, containing testability is our biggest concern, but uh, uh, intimidating and uh, destroying is uh, our primary goal. It's Oklahoma versus Miami. We're live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. known as a big game city and today it hosts one of its biggest ever in the Orange Bowl because it's one of those rare occasions when number one comes together with number two and this one started brewing a year ago when the hurricanes of Miami stormed into Oklahoma and upset the Sooners in their own den. Now the Orange Bowl and what an ideal setting it is for Miami and Oklahoma to meet and decide who for the time being at least is number one in college football. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to our main event today. I'm Brent Musburger. Both of these teams have won national championships during this decade and both of them did it right here. Miami came back against Nebraska in the Orange Bowl and then last New Year's night Oklahoma put away Penn State to wrap up a national championship. Today, we are going to have a great contrast, a passing team and a wishbone team. I'll be here with Aero Parsega, the coach, and Pat O'Brien, and keeping us up to date on the rest of the activities around college football is our man back in the studio in New York. So let's send you to Jim Nance. Jim. All right, thank you, Brent. Another game involving two ranked teams, number 20, Florida State, and number 5, Michigan. The Wolverines lead by three. They have the ball on the 15 of the Seminoles with four minutes to go. Number 10, Arizona trailing in the third quarter against Colorado. Now, the Wildcats quarterback, Alfred Jenkins, had not thrown an interception in his past 144 attempts, but here he's picked off by Rodney Rogers of the Buffaloes. He returns at 30 yards down to the seven. The Buffaloes scored on the next play, and that was the go-ahead score as they now lead 14-12 third quarter. Michigan State well in front of Western Michigan in the fourth. Now, Lorenzo White, 26 rushes, 192 yards, and three touchdowns for the Heisman candidate there. In baseball, Toronto and Boston scoreless in the bottom of the fifth. The magic number remains at three right now for the Red Sox. And this was the scene last night in Anaheim. The California Angels clinching their third American League West title in eight seasons. And in boxing last night, Edwin Rosario unleashed a furious second-round barrage to knock out heavily favored Livingstone Bramble for the WBA lightweight crown in Miami Beach. And today in Miami, college football's heavyweights, number one, Oklahoma, and number two, Miami, are set for their brawl. So let's go back to the Orange Bowl and Brett Musburger. Brett? All right, Jim. The crowd jamming the Orange Bowl in anticipation of number one versus number two. You get the feeling that what's at stake here is a heavyweight championship fight. It is that and more, and we'll be right back. CBS Sports College Football will be back after this word from your local station. This is CBS. The people? CBS Sports presents college football. Live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, it's the Oklahoma Sooners versus the Miami Hurricanes. Today's game is sponsored by Toyota, builder of tough, powerful, reliable trucks, Toyota. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. Cigna, a leader in insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services. And by the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. The place to be here this afternoon is the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, where it is number one, Oklahoma, against number two. Barry Switzer now preparing to bring out the defending national champion Sooners. 
one of the great traditional powers in college football, and here they come. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson, who has helped move Miami's team up amongst the elite of the college game. The Sooners being greeted by this huge crowd. champions until they lose and the man who guided them there is head coach Barry Switzer who has one of the more remarkable records in all of coaching the team that will try to knock the champions off Jimmy Johnson, who once played for Barry Switzer at Arkansas, then was an assistant coach along with him at Oklahoma. Well, Eric Parsegan, boy, I got the butterflies right here. And what a contrast we've got with these two great teams. It certainly demonstrates the versatility of college football and the different philosophies, both of them successful. For Oklahoma, a running team, triple option. For Miami, a big play offense, and they throw the ball. As different as they may look, they're similar in a lot of ways. They take what the defense gives them. In the case of Oklahoma, they'll opt to read the line or linebackers. In the case of Miami, they'll take a look at the secondary and pick the open receiver. Well, how can the two teams win? Let's start with Oklahoma. What must they do? I think Oklahoma will enhance their chances if they possession the football, maintain it, but grind out first downs. That puts Testaverde and company over on the sideline. They're no threat. Yet when they're on defense, the Sooners are, they're going to have to live for 60 minutes with the threat of the bomb against uh, with Miami. Now, how about the Hurricanes? What do they have to do here? The Hurricanes have to use a very disciplined defense, without question, taking all the triple option. One mistake, and any one of the four backs or Keith Jackson could go all the way. You'd like to be calling plays in this one, wouldn't you? <laughs> <I'm not bad. laughs> all right, down at midfield, the captains are soon going to meet. They will flip the coin and decide who will kick and receive. In the eyes of the young quarterback from Miami, Benny Testaverde. And the other side, the linebacker who will be staring in at him, number 44, Brian Bosworth. If I drop it, we flip it again. Are you ready? I call it in the air. He's called it tails, and it is tails. So Oklahoma has won the toss. Do you wish to make a first half or a second half decision? They want to defer. Oklahoma will defer. Miami, you have your choice of kick receiving or defending the goal. You will receive. They are going to receive. When you Which come back, you Oklahoma will kick right, off to Miami, and Vinny Testaverde will be the first at bat. Miami, baby. We are back, and there is just a hint of rain in the air. It's sunny and hot, humid down on the field, and it may be the deepest team that will win this game. Let's So the man who will kick it off for Oklahoma is number 91, Todd Thompson. Well, we've got a moment. Let's go to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Grant, in the locker rooms just moments ago, first at Oklahoma, Barry Switzer went over some final plans and then said to his team, you are the best team. In the Miami locker room, Jimmy Johnson said, good things are going to happen today. It's our turf, our fans, and our game. I think George Myra Jr. said it best when he said, it's time to stop talking and start playing. Let's do both. J.C. Penny, deep in the end zone, is coming out. Out to the 22, 
when it'll be first and ten with Derek White bringing him down. Let's take a look now, Era, at Vinny Testaverde's offense that will be coming to the line of scrimmage, the Heisman Trophy candidate. Melvin Bratton, the left halfback, an outstanding, exciting runner, vaults into the end zone. Alonzo Highsmith, watch his blocking today for Vinny. And Charles Henry, the tight end, got his chance when Willie Smith, the tight end of a year ago, went pro. Now here are the weapons outside. Brian Blades is nine, and Michael Irvin is 47. Great speed. Miami may be running today on first down. They may play some muscle, but no, they're not here. Testa Verde, and his receiver is covered, and down he goes. Richard Reed, 96, led the assault for the Sooners. Now, here's the offensive line that will have to pass block throughout this afternoon. John O'Neill's the left tackle. How about the rest of them, Era? Dave Olechner is an intelligent and consistent football player. Rocosi at center, great athlete and a big man. And Paul O'Connor, their best pass blocker. Matt Patchen coming back off of a foot injury. This is a second and 14 for Testament. With time, he throws to his tight end, Henry. And Brian Bosworth with his first tackle. Brent, he had Alonzo Highsmith out into the right flat, wide open. I don't know if we can see it from this angle. He's got an open formation. You see Testaverde. Now watch the tight end slip underneath here. Right there, Henry gets it right in the middle. But out to the right was Alonzo Highsmith wide open. This brings up a third and eight. Because Testaverde was sacked on first down, he has had to throw on second and third. There's a nickel, five defensive backs for the Sooners. Testaverde checks off at the line. He will run Bratton. It's three downs. With Bosworth, the first to hit him, number 44. There's Bosworth, number 44. Everybody's All-American. Great linebacker flowing with the play. Bratton comes off tackle to the left, makes a second effort. He shakes loose from Bosworth. And I'm telling you, this is the kind of guy you, that vaults into the end zone. He was trying to stretch for that first down. Jeff Beagles standing back 15 yards. Patrick Collins is the deepest man for the Sooners. The fair catch over on the 38 yard line by Ricky Dixon. Now let's take a look at this Oklahoma offense that will be coming up with the wishbone. Jamel Holloway from California is the quarterback. What about his receivers? Yeah, split end, the walk on, came on as a quarterback, Derek Shepard, and then Keith Jackson. This guy is sensational. I said, How fast is he to the coaches? He said, No one's ever caught him. Number of running backs will be used. Spencer Tillman is 20, Lydell Carr is 45, Patrick Collins 33. So here is the wishbone. Carr is the fullback. He is the closest to Holloway. the middle. On first down, they give to the fullback, and Bill Hawkins, number 54, led the defense. This is the offensive line that will open the way now for the Sooners this afternoon. Greg Johnson at right tackle. Big guy. Anthony Phillips, 475 at 280 pounds at right guard. Travis Simpson, who broke his ankle in the ninth game last year, is back again. Mark Hudson, a very good technician at left guard, and John Phillips at left tackle. The Phillips are brothers. Now, one of the halfbacks flanked outside, and they come with Tillman. Tillman for a first down, and across the 45 with Benny Blades hauling him down. That's the right side of the line that I was talking about, the great blockers. Take a look from the end zone here. You'll see the ball handed off. Now watch the hole open up. A nice job of blocking in there by Keith Jackson, the tight end spot. That was the right side of that line. Watch Anthony Phillips and Greg Johnson. Here is the power. This is a play they rehearsed all week down in Norman. Fullback lead with a halfback behind him. Now Carr, the fullback, is stacked up. And that was Derwin Jones who got across first and had an arm on him. Number 86 busted that play up and put Oklahoma in second and long where they don't want to be in the wishbone. Here's 
the defense. Bill Hawkins, who's been on one stop, already there. Jerome Brown is the All-American. Derwin Jones just made the stop. Big one. And 96, Dan Stubbs, he'll be very active. The linebackers, and we'll pick it up here in a moment. Second and 11, Holloway will pitch to the outside man. And that is Collins, who comes to the 35-yard line with Selwyn Brown, 32, bringing him down. Looked like Holloway just might have gotten a shot right at the end there. I saw him trying to shake it off. This is the option, their favorite play. Makes a good fake to Carr, the fullback. Comes to the outside here and deals off. Beautiful. There he is. He got the shot right there. That could have been called. That's Jerome Brown that hit a forearm in the head. Jerome Brown made 16 stops in Norman last year in that game. This is third and four for Holloway and the Sooners. Tillman. Rod Carter stepped in, and Barry Switzer may be short. Let's see where they spot it. They're going to have to measure it. No, it's a first down. They won't even take a look at it. They'll move the chains. Brent, the coaches of Oklahoma told me that right side of that line had Anthony Phillips, which I said can move about 475 at 280 pounds, and Greg Johnson are tremendous blockers. Now, the rest of the defense will pick up with George Myra Jr., 45. He's the middle linebacker. Rod Carter is the other man on the outside. On first down, they run Patrick Collins and Bubba McDowell, number 48, takes him down. In that defensive secondary, already Bubba McDowell has stepped in there to play along with Don Ellis. What about Ellis's responsibility? He's going to play man on man on the single receiver most of the day. Selwyn Brown is back there at strong safety, shaking off that injury that Eric told you about. Benny Blades, great speed back at free safety. Now, Bubba McDowell starting there at that position, number 48. Bubba's a vicious tackler, an excellent run support man. Second and seven. Here's Tillman. And another Oklahoma first down. Blades, number 36, hammered him down right there. Harold, what do we see with the wishbone here already on the part of Oklahoma? One of the things that impressed me, Brent, right on that play and other plays that they ran the option, is the blocking that this Oklahoma team gets downfield from their flanker backs, from their lead people. They do a good job on secondary people, which is very hard to block a secondary guy because he has so many ways to go. They executed it well there. Miami went three downs and out. Oklahoma on the move with its first possession. Down near the 20, and Carr. Cut by Holloway to the outside that time, who had faked splendidly to Carr and moved around the right side. McDowell back there to bring him down. He is an elusive one. It's going to be tough for the Miami Hurricanes. They're doing a good job on this first drive overall, but Jamel does a great job of faking into the fullback. It's hard to determine whether he has it, and the fullback seems to be cheated up, getting there very quickly. He had me faked out of the ballpark that time, Coach. Second and seven. Holloway's first pass out of the end zone incomplete. Jackson, his All-American tight end, was the intended target. Everything but the execution, you'll see from the end zone, Keith Jackson to your left, releases off the line. Good fake there by Jamel. There he throws the ball. He throws it over his head. If he dropped it in there, they could have had a score. He was open. Benny Blades was in on the cover. Anthony Stafford, number 25, replaces Collins on third and seven. Winston Moss, number 99, stormed in on the Sooner quarterback, and they will attempt a field goal. If you'll see here, there's an unbalanced line. Oklahoma is gone. Now watch 99. Moss step in here and take Jamel Holloway. Oklahoma was trying to unbalance the line and stretch the wide side of the field, but Miami did an excellent job with Moss coming up and doing, it, and doing the job on Holloway. A 38-yard attempt by Tim Lasher, who kicked four on New Year's night here against Penn State. No good.
just a minute, we'd like to interrupt the serious work being done on IBM personal computers to announce a birthday. Ours. It's the fifth birthday of our expanding family of IBM personal computers. We'd like to thank all the people who have bought over three million of them. And to invite a few million more people to visit an authorized IBM dealer or call their IBM representative and join the celebration. I want my Serta. Here's why people want their Serta. Why they're spoiled for any other mattress. Only Serta goes beyond just being firm. Beyond what others do. We top our support with the extra comfortable Serta surface. A unique difference you can feel in a Serta Perfect Sleeper. Perfect Sleeper on sale now during the National Home Furnishing Sale at participating stores. It's all part of the Perfect Sleeper Golden Anniversary Celebration. A man called Sweetness. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. Errol, what happened to Lasher on this Oklahoma field goal attempt? Taking a second look at it, it's like in golf. It was a pulled hook. The impulse to hit too soon, you see right here, and he pulls the ball to the left and low. Miami's second possession. They were three downs and out, and all week long, they rehearsed running on first down, and then they came out passing. Now let's see what they do on this first down. Now they come with the run. This was the game plan, and that was Alonzo Highsmith behind the right side. I want to take a look at this Oklahoma defense now. Daryl Reed, number 40, he's one of the outside ends. Richard Reed is no relation at tackle. Curtis Williams, starting at the middle guard, started against uh, this ball club a year ago. Steve Bryan, a fine player. Troy Johnson, really a hard charging end. Second and eight for Testaverde in Miami. Checks off again. It's Broughton swinging to the left, and he is cut off. And Brian Bosworth, number 44, hammered him as a penalty flag comes down. Looks like it might have been a, a holding penalty. Could have been a match, though. I didn't see it from this far side. Let's see what it is. Holding. Yep. Well, there, here's a young man who was talking about Jimmy Johnson and all the hurricanes from Norman and he is putting up here this afternoon in the Orange Bowl. Oh he does an excellent job right there of avoiding the center of Cozy steps right in there on Bratton and he gets a lot of help from the other Sooners. They took the penalty. I was wondering whether or not they take the penalty Brent or the down. But with this kind of passing attack I, it would be a tough choice. They've taken the penalty here though. So the ball is marked at the 15-yard line of the Hurricanes. They have a second down and 17 yards to go for the first down. Irvin's open. Boy, if he could have thrown the ball just a tad sooner, he had him wide open, waited just a second too long, and then overthrew him, trying to throw the ball a little too far. Let's take an isolated look here. You see Irwin, number 47, Irvin. He comes right down, breaks to the inside. Now, right there, if Testaverde would have delivered the ball, but he goes another 10 or 15 yards, and then the ball is thrown over, still it would have been a close to a touchdown on the play had he been able to hit him. He was between Lonnie Finch, number 9, and the free safety of Ricky Dixon, number 29. comes into the game. The tight end is out and there are three wide receivers. Third and 17. <laughs> Diving catch at the 36-5 Harriman. And Miami pulls a first down on a 21-yard gain. What a beautifully executed play here. You'll see Perriman come in from the left side. He gets deeper than the linebackers in front of the secondary. Bratton holds the linebacker, and Testaverde puts the ball. Oh, what a great catch by Perriman. Beautiful reception. Michigan with a dogfight today. Ooh. First and ten for the Hurricanes. No score. Just underway here in the Orange Bowl. Number one against number two. 
blades in motion. They bring Bratton, and he is cut off hard by you-know-who, Bosworth, number 44. What a game he is off to. Oh, let's meet some of these other personalities. Miliazzo is back there along with Dante Jones. Jones and Miliazzo have been rotating next to Bosworth so far here this afternoon. Now the secondary men. We'll see Lonnie Finch excellent on coverage. Ricky Dixon, a very, very fine football player at free safety. And the top guy, very intelligent in the background, in the backfield. Derek White, a 5'9", 188 of Lubbock, Texas. Second and nine. Underneath the black. And again, a helmet goes off. And this time it is Bosworth's helmet that falls to the ground. And you get a look at his hairdo. Just a little short pass underneath in front of the linebackers this time. Testagardi's looking downfield and turns to the right and he sees Bratton right here in front of the linebackers. Bratton tries to fake him out, but watch Bosworth, number 44, step in here with a lot of help. Boy, does he hit. Woo! They're going to have to carry me off this field, he said at the top of the broadcast. Third and six. Over the middle to the tight end, Henry. He is stopped short. No first down. He got out to the 45-yard line. Lonnie Finch, number nine, also there. Let's take a look at number 44, Bosworth, who has been all over the field. Has the tight end measured, and Henry spins beautifully away from him. And that time, the Boz came up slightly empty. But the Hurricanes do not get a first down. So they will be punting, and it'll be Jeff Fiegels. High punt. Collins, fair catch, fumbles, recovered, I believe, by Oklahoma right at the 16. Yes, they recover that fumble. A 38-yard punt. Unusual to see a Sooner drop a punt. They are so sure-handed on punts, and they will not let them go. They make the catch right there and save about 10 or 15 yards. A good one brewing, isn't it? Well, it's a beautiful afternoon here in Miami to be up in the Goodyear blimp, and we're getting some fine shots from overhead. No score, era. We've got 341 left in the first quarter. The breeze coming out of the east, and I'm sure it's helpful to these players because the humidity is over 80%. And you know what it's going to take its toll as this game comes forward. Well, Barry Switzer is already substituting liberally in that backfield. Holloway is still the quarterback. Brings it outside to the lane. And he steps out of bounds near the 32-yard line. Selwyn Brown giving chase. You can see why Jamel Holloway is the leading receiver. They faked the halfback, or he might have made a mistake there. I'm not sure. But the left halfback went the wrong way. I think it was Spencer Tillman. Now he comes, he hits that seam. And you can see the kind of speed he has. He gets to the corner and makes a first down. That's why he's the leading ground gainer on the Oklahoma Sooners football team, a 14-yarder. And the first down at the 30. There was movement on the left side of the offensive line as the flag comes down. John Phillips, I think it was, the left tackle. They went into an unbalanced line. The Sooners did. Let's go down to Pat O'Brien, Pat. Well, the mic wasn't working. We didn't need the mic, Pat. We saw that T-shirt. What's a Bosworth? Not too much here in Miami, but I want to tell you, folks, he is a good football player. Now, I know he makes all those outrageous quotes, but you go to an Oklahoma practice and watch him listen to the coaches and go through that, and you come away with great respect for him. He reminds me of a professional wrestler, a fellow by the name of Gorgeous George. You know who else copied that routine? Another athlete by the name of Muhammad Ali. And it's all right to talk big, but you better be ready to back it up, and so far, Bosworth is. Oh, he's 
he slippery. Coaches were telling me that he, you don't realize how strong he is. He's much stronger than most people suspect because he appears to be small, but he's physically strong. Barry Switzer moved him into the starting lineup because last year Jimmy Johnson's defense accidentally broke the leg of Troy Aikman. It was Jerome Brown who stormed in on him. Aikman is now out at UCLA. He is fine passing quarterback and Holloway runs this triple option superbly for Switzer and the Sooners. Second down and about seven and storming in on Spencer Tillman is Danny Stubbs number 96. Boy, Stubbs is a great football player, leading soccer on this football team a year ago. Very quick, and they're counting on him, and he certainly delivered right there. They look at ground level. Look to your left side of your screen. You'll see Stubbs penetrate, come all the way through, and make the play on Tillman. Nice job by Stubbs. Here is third and nine. This is a down and distance that Oklahoma is not comfortable with. He keeps only one running back behind the quarterback. Running the quarterback draw. Short of the first down. Oklahoma will have to punt his middle linebacker, George Myra, number 45, and Benny Blades, 36, sealed it up. That was a good thought. The quarterback draw from the open formation. We'll look at it from the ground level. You'll see Holloway come back, take a quick look. Then come right up the middle here. He does escape a couple of would-be tacklers. Jerome Brown, 98, was one of them. And finally, Myra steps in here, number 45, right there, and stops him. And short of the first down. Mike Winchester to punt for the Sooners. Harriman, number 33, at the 22. Three would be tacklers, but cannot get the corner turn before he runs out of real estate. 116 to go in the first quarter. It's one versus two, and no blood yet. From the Orange Bowl in Miami, along with the coach, Eric Parsegan, I'm Brent Musburger. Glad to have you along with us. Number one, Oklahoma. Number two, Miami. Both scoreless with 116 to go in the first quarter. Era, what has been the storyline as we look at Hurricane coach Jimmy Johnson? Well, Jimmy Johnson's football team has played relatively well. They've had open receivers, and uh, I'm sure there'll be more of them, but I would say Oklahoma, this has been basically a defensive battle thus far. Ball is on the 28th at the start of this series. Incomplete. You saw Bosworth waiting for Henry to come off the line, and he went downfield with him that time. From up here, it appeared that he might be open. Here's an end zone shot, but the ball is slightly overthrown. Right here, you'll see he's trying to drop the ball into Henry, number 82, and he takes a real shot from Ricky Dixon right there. Great block. I mean, great the tackle attempt. Another look at it and keep an eye on number 29 as he comes right in there, as Era pointed out, and Bosworth was chasing. If there's a question about Bosworth as a pro, it would be regarding his pass coverage. Testa Verde off a play fake, drops it down over the middle to Alonzo Highsmith. And he is battered down near the 38. Short of the first down, and that was Paul Miliazzo. Talk about a linebacker who doesn't get much attention. How would you like to line up next to Brian Bosworth? Well, that's what the senior from Kansas City has been doing, and he's a good one. He's a graduate student at uh, Oklahoma, so he's kind of a senior member out there. Well, here is third and one. Keeps this drive going then for the Hurricanes. First and ten Hurricanes at the 40. The ball is at the 40-yard line for Testaverde. And that Sooner defense waiting. It's a five-man front and four 
defensive backs. You've got leverage at the corner. And Bratton comes outside with a good, hard run that time before Finch was able to tackle him. Boy, that Bratton is really a fine back. 6'1", 217 pounds, and he just thrust himself. Member of the University of Miami track team. He's a good one. We've come to the end of the first quarter. Oklahoma and Miami are scoreless. We'll be right back after this message and a word from your local station. Pat O'Brien with you back in the Orange Bowl getting ready for the second quarter. It's very, very warm here. It's a little over 90 degrees and humidity has got to be, humidity has got to be 120, Brent. Players uh, have fans, as you saw, they have lots of water, lots of oxygen, and this heat and humidity can wear you down, as you well know, Brent. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Pat, and I think we can see there is also, along with that fan, just the slightest of breezes, which is now at Testa Verde's back as he comes to the line of scrimmage. It is second and three, and it is Bratton, and he does not get the first down. He is stuffed by Steve Bryan, 86, who led the defensive charge. His brother's a good one with the Atlanta Falcons. I think both teams are going to have to do a lot of substituting because in the fourth period, there's no question that this sun and this humidity takes a big toll on you. I experienced that directly here in this Orange Bowl. Third and two for the Hurricanes. Highsmith does not get it. Troy Johnson, the right defensive end, number 80. Great piece of defensive work by the entire Sooner team, but Troy Johnson, number 80. You watch the penetration. Bratton gets a good job, block number five, and there he is, Troy Johnson, outstanding speed. He was a tight end for two years, now playing defense. Miami forced the punt here early in the second quarter. They had to win, too. I thought they put that ball up. They could have made it, gotten the first down. They could have been a real scoring threat. Jeff Fegos. Fair catch, fumble. Miami signaling that they have it. There it is, indeed they do. The first big break of this game. And it was Eric Ham, a junior fullback. But hold everything. I don't know whether it was someone within two yards. You know what I heard, Eric? Yes. I heard a whistle as the ball was coming down toward the man making the fair catch. And I don't know whether there was someone in the stands, but I distinctly he heard a whistle. a look at it it went right through his hands no question that ham recovered it but they are now signaling that the hurricanes will punt it again and johnson is furious johnson has his hands raised switzer yelling from across the way really been explained to the coaches. A timeout is being charged Oklahoma. Barry Switzer wants that return team over around him. They've dropped the last two punts. Jimmy Johnson is going to get it sorted out. We will try to find out what happened. sure exactly Brent he's trying to explain it now to Jimmy Johnson whether there was a whistle there I distinctly heard a whistle and I thought how unusual I mean he hadn't even touched the ball yet I thought maybe it was somebody over here in the band that I had heard and now I'm wondering 
Switzer had to have a lecture for his punt return team normally. They are extremely sure-handed. Well, we will still seek that out with Pat O'Brien down on the field to find out what happened for you. Meanwhile, Miami hunting again. Bad snap. Picked up. They didn't have a rush on. And he booms one. Find the ball! Bounces on into the end zone. On the touchback, it'll come out to the 20. A 52-yard punt. But Oklahoma breathes a sigh of relief because they've got the ball. Pat O'Brien, have you got the answer for us on what happened on that play? Yes, I do, Brent. The officials tell me that it was an inadvertent whistle and a loose ball. The rule is you play the down over again. Let's go back to you, Brent. So, indeed, it was a whistle I heard just before the ball made contact and slipped right through his hand. What a break this is for Oklahoma. Miami would have had its first serious scoring threat, but instead, here come the Sooners. difficult to hear at that end in the Orange Bowl. It's going to be tough for Holloway. I've seen pro quarterbacks with a lot of difficulty down here. Now, Errol, what's the rule on crowd noise? When that whistle blows, it's a dead ball, Brent. It's all over with. It's most unfortunate for the Hurricanes under the circumstances. But what about the crowd noise now, the situation facing Holloway? What happens here? How many warnings does the crowd get? Well, it varies with various conferences. Now, he gets two warnings. He'll get two warnings. Then he'll come to the sideline and ask for help from the coaches to quiet the crowd down. If the crowd doesn't quiet down, they will announce over the PA system, if you don't allow them to run the play, we will charge you a timeout or a five-yard penalty. Now, that was the first one. stomach of Lydell Carr, the fullback, which is the easiest play to run in that situation. Noise is deafening. I guess he did want to get a playoff, I guess. He could have asked for a discre discretionary timeout again. There was a lot of crowd noise, but try to take it out of it, as you pointed out, to run a play, get it going again. Well, second and eight for the Sooners. This is a top down in distance for a wishbone attack. Johnson finally tumbled on it for the Sooners. Another break for Oklahoma. What a job Stubbs does right there. And he holds on to Jackson so he can't get to the ball. Beautiful job there of defense. Miami has the ball at about the three and a half yard line, Brent. Big, big play. Did he, get, he didn't get it back? I thought he had gotten the ball back. Third down. trying to quiet the crowd down at that end of the field. And they've turned the heat up on Switzer and the Sooners here in the Orange Bowl. He sure doesn't like this series of downs. He got a break on the inadvertent whistle. Another break here on the recovery. And they're backed up right deep in their own territory. And with a wishbone team, he must be very careful about putting it up down here. Ball being spotted down at the three. The Sooners come out. They need 27 yards.
Tillman. Well, he got him a little breathing room for the punter. A little, little better position to kick the ball, and they certainly were back at that three-and-a-half-yard line. Just run the ball off tackle with Tillman. No high-risk play, and Tillman does get enough yardage to get him out where they have a decent kicking position. They blocked him over the left side. 68 Phillips pulls and makes a good block. And they're out to about the 13. Winchester standing back at his own end zone. They got close last time on the rush, Frank. He gets it out to the other side of the 50, where a fair catch is called for by Perriman. A fine 43-yard punt. We'll be right back. There's no score. Every man who wears Brute deodorant, there's a woman who'll be glad he did. Because a man who wears Brute deodorant is nice to be close to. And nobody knows that better than a woman. Only Brute deodorant gives you long-lasting protection with the great smell of Brute. Hello. Brute deodorant, cologne, and everything else. Brute, it smells like a man. Great. Lee Trevino on looking out for number one. First, look for the compact trucks that are number one in sales. Toyota. Look for the trucks that are number one in truck satisfaction. Toyota. Look for the trucks that have the power. Toyota. And the payload. You guessed it. Toyota. And look out for guys who can sink a 20-foot pup with a number five tire iron. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota. When the Spartans rock, Lorenzo rolls. Lorenzo White continues on his run for the Heisman when Michigan State hosts the Hawkeyes of Iowa next Saturday on CBS Sports. Well, here are this week's Toyota Leadership Awards to the team players who've been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions and academics. And today's game team leadership winners are Evan Gatewood from Oklahoma. He's a senior finance major, a three-point grade point average from Dallas. And Dave Alekna, he's a senior MBA computer science major with a three-point grade point average from Oak Lawn, Illinois. And Toyota will donate a check of the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. It has been a dandy so far. No score and a lot of raw emotion. Testaverde on first down. Perelman, and it is knocked away at the last second on that far sideline. Ricky Dixon, number 29, the free safety, moving over era. What a great job Dixon did. Here from the end zone, Dixon covers an awful lot of ground. But you just see him, he gets over here just before. Look at Dixon right there. What a marvelous defensive job. He is perhaps the best all-around athlete in that secondary for Barry Switzer. He's the center fielder, and he made like Willie Mays that time, didn't he? Second down and ten. Time, and he hits Urban, fumble, and recovered by Miami. Alfredo Roberts, the tight end, pounced on the loose ball. A ground level look at it again. They're, they're getting deeper than the defenders this time. Testaverde backs up. Urban comes right in behind the linebackers. He Testaverde throws right between them, but this contact right there shakes that ball loose. But the Hurricanes recover. And it was again Dixon turned in a superb defensive job on Urban. A 10 yard gain and a first down for the Canes. They'll run Williams behind the right side of that offensive line. Getting close to the 40. Arrow, what I'm seeing right now is that Miami's offensive line seems to want to put a little muscle on the Sooners here. Well, they, uh, the, the Sooners did a great job in the first quarter in stopping the run, but you can see from up here that there were receiver, receivers that were open, and that's going to set up their running play for them, running game for them. Well, the Prudential College football report is coming up in half. Jim Nance will fill us in on everything. That was a six-yard gain by Williams. 
who has replaced Brock. This is Williams again. And Brian was able to break through and get a hand on him. And then Dante Jones, number 50, cleaned it up. But Brian disrupted the play by getting across the line of scrimmage. This will be a third and three for the Canes with Brian Blades checking in and Michael Irvin. He came out, so Blades has replaced Irvin, and they've been going a lot with Paramount. Timeout is called by Vinny Testaverde. He took a look across the defensive line. He saw a strange defense and called a timeout. You might be able to make it on your old antifreeze another year. But then again, you just might find yourself left out in the cold. Driving just 10,000 miles on weak, neglected antifreeze can cause freeze-up and make a radiator look this bad. While a Presto radiator looks this good. So, for maximum protection, don't push your luck. Change it once a year, every year, with fresh Presto. America rides Monroe, America rides Monroe, on the road, the way to go, America rides Monroe. More people ride Monroe shocks and struts than any other brand, and right now, get up to $20 in rebates, get $2 back on each Monroe Matic Plus, and $5 back on each Gas Magnum or Gas Matic. They'll give you the best ride ever, guaranteed. On the road, the way to go, America rides Monroe. use ordinary tap water to make their beer. Not coarse. Pure. Natural. Yeah. Coors is the one. One of the deep threats, Michael Irvin. And I ask him what kind of a quarterback Vinny Testaverde is. I tell you, Vinny's the kind of quarterback that make a good receiver, be a great receiver, because, um, you know, you run a 20-yard pattern, and you don't have to worry about making the great catches because he's going to put the ball right between the numbers. Um, and, and they always say, you know, a great quarterback makes a great receiver, and, and in this case, I, I think it's true. Well, he'd like to put one between the numbers here on this third and three if he can. Under a heavy rush, Bosworth had a hand on it, and it was pulled free. Brian Bosworth with a near interception. He's mad at himself. That time, era, they showed a new defensive wrinkle. They put Scott Garl in as a nickelback, and they blitzed him from that package. They've been working on that back in Norman all week. The thing that uh, Benny Testaverde is able to do is to scramble. A year ago, they flushed him out of the pocket two or three times, and each time he scrambled and completed passes. I thought he was going to do it there again, but he almost threw an interception. With the wind at his back, this will be a 56-yard field goal attempt by Mark Seeley. Both teams have come up empty with field goal attempts. One versus two, and era, we are still scoreless. It's a defensive ball game. tomorrow on the NFL today. That's that controversial instant replay rule at 12.30 Eastern time. We'll take a look at it, then we're going to give you an opportunity to vote on it. How do you feel about instant replay? Should it be thrown out? Kept, or should we have some revisions? And Joe Montana, in his first interview since undergoing that back surgery, and then following that, the big one was the Bears, Cincinnati, and some of you will see New Orleans, the Giants, the 49ers against Miami, and the rest of our lineup. Here it is, first and ten. Pitches, and it is Stafford. Run out of bounds near the 45 by Jimmy Jones, 63. Nice job of defensive response by the Hurricanes coming down the line on the triple option. Holloway executed it. 
but everybody came off of their blocks, had their assignments, and did a nice job, held it to about three-yard gain. Barry Switzer again using a lot of players here this afternoon. Finally, the Buckeyes get rolling. Second and seven. Superb defensive play by Jimmy Jones. Just a freshman youngster, Jones is. He's 6'4", 241, been clocked in 4'6". Not bad for a 241-pounder. Out of Okeechobee. 6'4", 241 pounds. Oklahoma's only one of four on third downs. Holloway throws it, from, if they call it incomplete. He did not have possession. They call it incomplete. He was trying to lateral that ball off. But he was hit just as he was trying to deal the ball off. I think it was Spencer Tillman is the trail man. That was the hitch and ladder. They worked on that. Watch this time. You watch Holloway deliver the ball. Spencer Tillman coming out of the backfield, I believe, to the left side. Now he's trying to deal it off right there. But he's hit just as he tries to do it. Shepard just didn't quite get it there. Winchester to punt again. Perriman set to return. side of his foot. Will it go out of bounds? And they are going to spot the ball at around the 39-yard line, calling it a 17-yard punt by the Sooners. Number one and number two, and no score. There's a tendency in business to focus on the big picture. But at Cigna, we realize the big picture is actually made up of millions of smaller pictures, which is why our companies provide an array of insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services to millions of individuals and thousands of businesses. One person at a time. Cigna. Personalized service to business around the world. Some very busy people are starting to switch gasolines because many gasolines don't have enough detergent to keep their fuel injectors or carburetor clean and running smooth. They're switching to Phillips 66 Super Clean Unleaded and Super Clean Premium Unleaded. As little as one tank full can clean your engine to run like new. And if you don't switch to Phillips 66 Super Clean Unleaded Gasolines, somebody else may clean up. Super Clean Unleaded Gasolines. Clean up and keep clean gasolines from Phillips 66. A man called Sweetness. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. We're back in the Orange Bowl with 8.42 to go here in the first half. Oklahoma and Miami are scoreless. Vinny Testaverde bringing the Canes up to the line of scrimmage at the 39-yard line. Highsmith. there is no question with Daryl Reed bringing him down that the defenses on both sides have dominated this clash here so far. Let's take an isolated look at Reed. Number 40, the left outside linebacker here at the left end, sits right in there, wards off the near back block, which is Bratton, number five, steps inside there and takes Highsmith. Nice job. Excellent defensive work. Isn't it interesting, Brent, the two great offensive teams coming in here have been stymied for a quarter and a half. Five defensive backs for Oklahoma, and they throw to Bratton, and he has the first down across midfield. The thing that the uh, Sooners are fearful of is playing man-to-man -man coverage. They're doing a lot of zoning. 
And of course, Miami is taking in front of the linebackers and then beyond the linebackers. It's very difficult to stop that kind of an attack when you get the protection. Now take a look at this pass protection. Look at on the outside, Patchen, who's been slowed by an injury and was very questionable. The Sooners felt they could attack him today. And that time, he was holding off that outside charge. On a first down, Testaverde steps away from the rush. He loses two. Drops to Highsmith. Highsmith gets across the 40-yard line with Finch giving chase. Shades of last year, Brent. The thing I talked about, Vinny Testaverde, is a scrambler. He can avoid rushes. Comes back in the pocket. Doesn't see anybody open. He can bench press 300 and some odd pounds. He's 218 pounds. He moves around. He's got good feet. Has a presence to hit Highsmith. And, of course, you see number nine, which is Finch, come in there. And the ball is being spotted as you watch Testaverde's quick feet on the move. That probably is what separates him from Bernie Kosar down here at Miami. He's a little bit quicker than Bernie was. First and ten, Benny on a deep drop, sets the screen. It is Bratton, and he steps out of bounds on the far side with Miyazo, number 42, pressing him defensively. Sooners did a good job, Brent, that time of reading the screen, having enough people on the short side of the field, and uh, covered it well. Overhead view from the Goodyear Blunt. Second down and nine. Both teams are slowing down a little bit as a result of the heat. Testa Verde. Look at that. He eludes a tackler. Scrambling back and still trying to make a game. chase on the far side and Testaverde used a timeout we'll come back the Hurricanes on the move they have another first down on the outside, comfort to make you feel good on the inside. Looking out for number one. Looking out for you has made Toyota number one in compact truck sales and number one in truck satisfaction. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota! Welcome to the Silver Bullet, home of a cold Coors Light. Rob, do you work out? Yeah, I belong to a club. Here's your Coors Light. Yeah, I'm thinking about joining a club, but can't seem to find a good enough reason. I mean, is a flat stomach a good enough reason? Nope. Building up my endurance? Nope. Big muscles? No. Nope. See the club, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> oh! What's the name of that club? No slowing down Rob? with a silver Rob. bullet tonight. On the NFL Today, an analysis of the controversial instant replay rule. And you, the fan, can call in and cast your vote tomorrow on CBS Sports. Oklahoma was getting that much in a single play against UCLA and Minnesota. Miami with 38 in passing, and the Sooners may have to come up with some passing before this one's over. No score and 6.35 to go in that first half. First and 10 for Testa Verde, who just put on a fine running exhibition. The ball is inside the Sooner 25-yard line. Testa Verde checks off.
This is Oliver. Daryl Oliver out of Palatka, Florida. Checked in at fullback in his first carry from the scrimmage. Miliazzo and Bosworth combining on the tackle. A second and seven. And when Testaverde goes in, he is so dangerous because a back can come out as a receiver in this situation. Oklahoma with a standard defense. Corners back off. Blades. Out of bounds inside the 10 and close to the 5. Appears to me that the rush is the Sooners. They're either tired or the protection is super by Miami, but Testaverde had an awful lot of time. A passer like that, receivers like they have, you're going to get somebody open. Watch the protection here. Watch the time that Vinny Testaverde has. He looks off to his left. Fakes the ball, pumps it, then turns to the right, plenty of time. Then he delivers right on target to a comeback, Blades. Nice job. Down to about the 8, 7, 8 yard line. With a first and goal, it's Bratton and Highsmith in the backfield. They throw on first down. There it is, the first score of the game. that was questionable for Miami. Willie Smith gone. But stepping in, Charles Henry and Alfredo Roberts. And it is Roberts who on first down burns the Sooners. Number two draws opening blood here in the Orange Bowl. Miami seven, Oklahoma nothing. We'll be right back. Dawn at the track where speed and heat work relentlessly to break down motor oil. This is where we put Quaker State motor oil to the ultimate test. This is our laboratory, where we make sure Quaker State measures up to our standards and yours. Because people who care about their cars don't cut corners on quality. Quaker State, the big Q stands for quality. So we're back, and Roberts celebrating down there at the bench, era. You watch right here, Roberts, right there, comes down and breaks to the outside. Watch the time Testaverde has to throw the ball. Watch Roberts, releases off the line, no one delays him. Testaverde has all kinds of time. Roberts is not supposed to be a great receiver, but what a great catch he makes there. Selig with the ball teed up. And the Hurricanes leading by seven. It took them eight plays to go 60 yards. And the most impressive play was when Testaverde scrambled for that first down. Deep in the end zone, we'll down it there. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. So tomorrow, 
on the NFL. The Bears and the Bengals, the main attraction. The Saints will play the Giants. The Giants with a new field goal kicker, Raul Allegra. The San Francisco 49ers are right here against Miami. The Rams go into Philadelphia. Green Bay plays Minnesota. Detroit, Cleveland. And that starts our coverage at 12.30 with the NFL today. Now the critical thing. The wishbone must come from behind, and it is not a come-from-behind attack. It's Tillman. Winston Moss, 99, led the assault. Correct the last three possessions of the Sooners. Three plays and out. Now, Eric, this is a superb defensive job being done by Jimmy Johnson's team. What are some of the keys here against Holloway? How are they jamming them up so successfully? Well, they're getting a lot of penetration by offsetting the two tackles, and also they've got hitters in there in the secondary. They've committed themselves to the run, not worried about the pass, and for obvious reasons. Holloway keeps it, tries to find an alley, and there are a couple of hitters right there. Myra, the first person to get a hand on him, running over from that middle linebacking spot. His father was a quarterback here at Miami, later played with the San Francisco 49ers among teams in the National Football League, and his son, now the middle linebacker, takes the defensive call from the sideline and passes it on. He had a great game against Oklahoma last year with 18 tackles. Third and four. And they jam the fullback. Carr was not going as Derwin Jones and Rod Carter, 86 and 91, stuff him right there. Chester set to punt for the Sooners. Fair catch called for at the 44 by Perriman. 31 yard punt. 347 left in the first half. You watch at the top of the screen, Bubba McDowell, number 48. You see him out the outside, has blocked four kicks in the last three regular season games. Here he is, but he's blocked out just at the last moment. Look at him launch himself. Whoa. First and ten. put on the ground there's a fumble on the exchange and the Sooners get the turnover and a chance to move in very unusual for a guy like Rakosi and Testaverde who have worked so long together it looked like Vinny might have pulled out that's exactly what he did era that could have been the center snapping it late but it appears that Vinny is pulling out on it because he's called the snap count. He should know what it is. He's the quarterback. Well, that nose guard, Curtis Williams, 93, he was very alertly in on it. Smothering that ball. Sooners have it. First and 10 at the Miami 42-yard line. 338 first half. Spencer Tillman. near the 30, which would give Oklahoma a first down as Bubba McDowell brings him down. Spencer Tillman had the rushing record as a freshman. Here, oh, he gets beautiful blocking right at the point of attack by the whole right side. Blades misses a tackle number 36, and he comes up field for a first down, or close to it. They're going to measure. That was Anthony Phillips and Greg Johnson who are opening up that hole on the right side for the Sooners. And that time, Era, Barry Switzer gave them a bit of a different look. He took one of his halfbacks and put him out in the slot as another potential receiver. Now, that's a formation they worked on in Norman, and they were able to throw at it in practice. They would hit that halfback outside. Well, they force the, uh, there's Vinny Testaverde, 
They forced the Miami defense into a different coverage when they open their formations, and they don't, and the Miami Hurricanes don't quite get quick support at the off-tackle spot. Don Ellis shaken up. He is the cover man who has been assigned to Shepard. So that would cause him to bring Tolbert Bain in from the sideline. I'm referring to Miami coach Jimmy Johnson. This could be a big loss for the Hurricanes if he can't return. Don Ellis is his best man-on-man -man cover back, and he is being helped off because of a leg injury. Now, Ellis ought to know how to cover wide receivers. He was one himself, and they moved him over to defense because he's, he's the best man-on-man -man coverage person on the Hurricane team. We'll have all the scores coming up at halftime on the Prudential College Football Report. First and ten, the ball is at the 31-yard line. Holloway turned the other way, and Jerome Brown stuffed him right there. I think Holloway was attempting to check the playoff at the line of scrimmage, and they did not pick up the change. He turned to the left. And the running backs move through to the right. Era, take a look at this. No question, it was a communication problem. You don't know whether it was Holloway or the two backs. Both backs are going right. They may have not heard the audible by Holloway at the line of scrimmage. In any event, there's Jerome Brown, number 98. What a load he is. Second and 13 for Holloway. And he hits the tight end. Keith Jackson, who busts inside that 20-yard line, which would give them another first down with Rod Carter in pursuit. The toughest play, the toughest play, pass in the wishbone is the one that was just thrown. Fake to the fullback. Everybody comes up to support. The tight end releases off the line, and he's wide open right there. Keith Jackson, blades 36, comes back to the inside, and 91 brings him down, who is Rod Carter. 2.20 to go, first half. First down, Sooners. And the half coming through is Tillman. Barry Switzer watching intently from that Sooner sideline. He's not accustomed to being behind, certainly not this year. Boy, he's done a great job out of Oklahoma. Former coaching colleague who played for Switzer at Arkansas when Barry was an assistant. 149 first half. Holloway breaks the tackle, pitches to Collins outside, and he will not get the job done. Selwyn Brown, 32, with a splendid tackle. Oh, what a job Selwyn Brown did on that. Shed his blocker, fought it off, came right up, kept that ball carrier right in front of him. That was a marvelous defensive job. And he was out for two weeks. It looks like he's hurt his leg again. Watch here to the left of your screen. There's the pitch by Holloway. And now watch Selwyn Brown fight that blocker off. Of course, you saw the tail end of that and make the tackle himself one-on-one. -on -one. 125 left here in the first half. Spencer Tillman going off on the far side for the Sooners. He was shaken up. And now wholesale changes in that defensive secondary as far as the Hurricanes are concerned. Kevin McCutcheon has replaced Brown. Third and 11. Holloway. Tough to get the oh, ball in. He goes back to the end zone. Center touchdown. Oh, flag down. I think there were illegal receivers downfield. goes down to his knees at the 15 and jumps back up as he realizes it will not count. Collins caught the ball for Barry Switzer Sooners. But the penalty will be against Oklahoma. There's an end zone shot. You see Holloway coming right back into the pocket here. Who said he couldn't pocket pass? Can't see well, but he sure can run well, can he? He scrambles out to the right. You can see up here that he had the receiver wide open. He finally turns and finds him, but the illegal receivers were downfield. Now he turns and finds him right there. Great job of scrambling and vision, but all for naught. Been a change in the rule, too, on an illegal receiver downfield. It's no longer loss of down. 
so it's still third down. The ball is spotted at the 26. We're inside of a minute here in the first half. Miami leads Oklahoma seven to nothing. This will be a third and 16 to go for the Sooners. As number one against number two continues to unfold here in the Orange Bowl. Timeout has been called, and that the last one by the Sooners. That gives us a chance to take a look at the Miami campus here in South Florida. Miami, crossroads of the Americas. In this dynamic community is a center of higher education where students share in the excitement of an institution that is dedicated to pushing the leading edge in the pursuit of knowledge. Celebrating its 60th year, the University of Miami retains the pioneering spirit that led it to become one of the largest research institutions in the Southeast, in medicine, in marine science, in virtually every aspect of life. The University of Miami is changing the way we look at the world. The University of Oklahoma's chemistry faculty are making bold new discoveries, gaining new understanding into the process of blood clotting, the nervous system, oil production, high energy batteries and other chemical mysteries. New knowledge for a new age through dynamic research and instruction. And here in Miami, 57 seconds to go. Be a third down and 16 yards for Oklahoma. The ball is just the far side of the 25. Holloway sends it back. Short of the first down. Leon Perry, the fullback, who got to the 15. Sending in the field goal team, they're going to grab, try to get the three points. Of course, Perry has been pretty tricky in some of these areas. Fake the field goal and go for something, but I think maybe with 27 seconds left, 26, they're going to kick it and get on the board. It's a 32-yard attempt by Lasher. And Oklahoma is on the board. 17 seconds to go in the first half. Lasher kicks a field goal, reducing Miami's lead to 7-3. To the turnover sets this up on the fumble exchange, and Oklahoma had a touchdown call back because Holloway was forced to scramble out of the pocket, and as he did, one of his linemen moved illegally downfield. Collins got himself open on the far side of the end zone. Holloway hit him, but it was called back. And the Sooners settled for a field goal. Seventeen seconds left for Miami. With Thompson teeing the ball up at the 35-yard line. Miami with a couple of timeouts remaining. J.C. Penny retreats to the goal line. He's there in the middle. Thompson wants to move the ball over a little bit, so I'll remind you that we're going to go back to New York and hear from Jim Nance. He'll have all the scores and highlights here at halftime. J.C. Penny. is a penalty. Well, they're at low scoring, 7-3. Early in the week, the Sooners 
came out a two-point favorite. It quickly jumped to about five or six. What are your feelings here about the first half and the way Miami has played? Well, I felt coming into the ball game that the defenses might command the outcome of this game. But I didn't think that both teams would be able to play as well as they have defensively. I thought one or the other with these explosive offenses would 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 do something that would put points on the board because that's all they have done. Make a lot of big plays, both teams. But this has been a marvelous football game and great athletes on both sides. Thompson straightened up his tee. Five yards have been marched off back to the 30-yard line. the return man the fair catch call for at the 32 yard line and there will be 17 seconds left so a big weekend of football here on cbs the instant replay rule which has caused such a controversy we'll look at that at 12 30 eastern time and give you a chance to vote you want to keep it junk it or change it we'll have some numbers for you to dial and you can register your vote that's starting at 12 30 eastern time tomorrow on cbs joe montana We'll be along. We'll find out how he's coming. Sure hope he's able to play again after that back operation. Here it is. 17 seconds for Testaverde. Miami leads Oklahoma. And Benny will go down with the clock ticking away. Curtis Williams, number 90. Jimmy Johnson content to go into the locker room. Leading seven to three. It was a scoreless first quarter here in the Orange Bowl. As number one and number two dueled defensively. Then taking advantage of excellent field position, Vinny Testaverde drove the Canes to their only touchdown. A pass to his tight end on first down. Miami led it seven nothing. Oklahoma then recovered a fumble, moved down and kicked a field goal. Haynes going leading 7-3. Jim Nance is next. Here at the half, Miami leading Oklahoma 7-3. Number two over number one. And some of the numbers that you might find revealing. Total yards in the first quarter, the two teams dueled on fairly even ground. Both defenses turned in excellent plays. Take a look at that second quarter. In the time of possession, Oklahoma hoped to keep the ball and dominate the clock here this afternoon, but they have not been able to. Now, the average yards today for Oklahoma are only three yards per rush, as opposed to the 6.4 that they recorded in those routes of UCLA and Minnesota. And the one man who has been stopped so far by the Hurricanes is fullback Lydell Carr. He has carried the ball only four times for four yards. Miami leads it. And here's Pat O'Brien. Back inside the Orange Bowl, where number two Miami leads number one Oklahoma seven to three. And if you're just joining us this afternoon, I'm Pat O'Brien, and welcome back to the Orange Bowl. If you're just joining us, don't let that score fool you. Every one of those points was made the old-fashioned way. They earned them. Now, we're going to get you back to the second half here in just a moment. Play's about to resume, but first, a special message from my colleague, Brent Musburger. Well, on each Saturday on our coverage of NCAA football here on CBS, we select a Chevrolet player of the game. And in conjunction with that award, Chevrolet contributes a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both schools. Pleasure to welcome back an old friend, Tom Stout, who is the general marketing director of the Chevrolet Motor Division. Tom, nice to have you with us. Thanks, Brent. How many times are you going to get to see a confrontation of the number one and number two teams? Hard to beat, isn't it? Oh, it's tremendous. Tom, why a most valuable player award from Chevrolet in a game like this? Well, Brent, to us, it symbolizes more than anything else the very best values in college football. The need to use your talent to the fullest. Commitment, dedication, hard work, teamwork, the will to win. Things that can stand you in good stead all of your life. 
And you know, Brent, over these 16 seasons and 2,500 awards, we've really seen some spectacular performances, haven't we? Well, we sure have. By some of the really great players. And standing right beside us today is one of the very best, and I might add most exciting, Dan Marino of the Miami Dolphins. Dan, nice to have you with us this afternoon. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. And uh, I know it was an honor for me to win the award while I was in college. And uh, I think the most important thing that everybody has to realize is that the scholarship uh, donation helps other students in the university and necessarily wouldn't get that help. And, and you feel that you personally contribute to the school when you do that. Dan, I want to wish you a lot of luck tomorrow against the San Francisco 49ers. Well, thank you, Brent. We're looking forward to it and uh, hope we win the game. All right. And Tom, certainly a lot of thanks to you for all the help you've done all the students, too. Well, thanks to you, Brent, and thank you, Dan. All right. And we'll continue with our coverage of Oklahoma, Miami in just a moment. At the half, Miami leading Oklahoma 7 3. And you know, Coach. I'll tell you, it seemed like just a matter of time. Oklahoma made some mistakes there, especially early on in the second quarter. Yes, they really did. And from our vantage point, you could see it was just going to be a matter of time before the Hurricanes were going to get on the board. Now, this is the punt where there was the inadvertent whistle. Miami would have been in striking position right there. Instead, because the whistle blew, they didn't get the fumble. They repunted. They held Oklahoma. And shortly after that, they were able to punch it in for their first touchdown. But remember now that Oklahoma missed an open receiver going in. And late in the second period, they had one called back. Now, what about the second half, era? Well, for Oklahoma, I think they have to open up their formations to reduce the defenses. I think the Hurricanes have just done a remarkable job defensively. For the Hurricanes, I wouldn't change anything. I think they played an outstanding first half, and all I would say is more of the same. And we'll be coming back with more of the same right after these messages from your local stations. This is CBS. The longer you live, the more you realize life is full of the unexpected. People this age remember the Dust Bowl, the stock market crash, and the world wars, and they know better than anyone the difference a good bank can make. Well, for a hundred years, people have come to Florida National, a bank built on the great expectations of Floridians like these. And like these. Florida National Bank, expect more from us. High Lie returns to Melbourne Saturday, September 13th with two exciting performances at noon and 7.15 p.m. Play the big-paying twin try. Enjoy dinner and drinks at the all-new Full Court View Vista Terrace Restaurant and Lounge. That's Melbourne High Lie Saturday, September 13th at noon and 7.15 p.m. Take I-95 to exit 72 and head east to Sarno and Wickham Roads. Get lucky at Melbourne High Lie. Melbourne High Lie. Get lucky tonight. Classic comedy on MASH, weeknights. CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, and by Michelob Light, super premium taste and less filling beer. <laughs> Mark Seelig set to kick it off, and here we go, sitting on 7-3, and number two trying to knock number one off its perch. Oklahoma, of course, was declared national champion on New Year's night here in the Orange Bowl when they defeated Penn State. Now they have struggled somewhat here in the first half, unable to score a touchdown after destroying UCLA and then Minnesota. Barry Switzer, no doubt, had a few words to say about that at the intermission. Stafford and Collins are deep. Stafford downs it. Oh, he comes out. He makes a mistake. He's at the two back toward the end zone. Battles his way out. And there's a penalty marker thrown on the far sideline as Stafford was down near the eight-yard line. There, a big mistake. He hesitated over on the far side, then came out late. Personal foul against the Hurricanes will... Take care of Stafford's mistake, I guess. There'll be a 15-yarder. But that was a terrible judgment on his part. Maybe he figured he was in a sprint race. He's won the 100, the 200, and the 400 in Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. That wasn't the 100 or the 200. That was running for your life. <laughs> well, this has been a great defensive football game. 
I mean, Barry Switzer's got to be furious about that. What a way to start the second half. You see the quarterback matchup. One a thrower, the other a runner. From the wishbone, here come the Sooners. Pure bone, let's see if they can keep it on the ground and grind it out. They come up with a halfback, Patrick Collins, behind the fullback lead block. Danny Stubbs, 96, led the defensive charge against Switzer Sooners. Good support by that defensive secondary. Everybody is reacting to the ball well for the Hurricanes. Even if they get a little seam to the inside, you get everybody in there doing a good job. Right guard Anthony Phillips is replaced by Gary Bennett for Oklahoma. They go to an unbalanced line. There was a penalty marker down. The right side of that line moved for Oklahoma as Carr, the fullback, came up inside. Now, Barry Switzer's fullback was handled in the first half. He was held to only four yards. That's the second time that the Sooners' offensive line has jumped offside in this game. Now you're looking at two strong players in there, Brown and Jones. I mean, they're outstanding players for the Hurricanes. I'll tell you, the last time someone scored on them rushing, I remember it. It was against Maryland. We did that the last game. time Miami gave up a touchdown regular season. All right, here's second down and 11 now. Carr is again stood up at the 25-yard line. Rod Carter, number 91, is in there. Era, they have taken the fullback right out of this wishbone attack. They really have. They have to break their bone, either with one of the halfbacks, reduce the defense. You can see the swarming Phil linebackers. Look at the number of Hurricanes in on that. By reducing the defense here now, they'll force them more into a balanced look. Third and nine. They had busted one of the halfbacks. Holloway slips down inside the 15-yard line. Danny Stubbs was able to trip him up. Stubbs is having it. Stubbs is having a great game. He's a tremendous talent who has not received a lot of attention because of Jerome Brown. You notice how they contained him that time? They weren't going to let him out. They forced him back to the inside, squeezed down tight. He tried to escape from it, but tripped as he went backwards. Winchester standing near his own goal line to punt for the Sooners. Perriman back deep for Jimmy Johnson and the Hurricanes. Fair catch signal at the 48-yard line of the Sooners, and Benny Testaverde will bring that offense onto the attack after a 33-yard punt. Testaverde, a leading candidate for the Heisman, so too is Lorenzo White. He only played to the third quarter as that game was a route. 192 yards. Big afternoon. He jumps up. I think there's no doubt about it. Testaverde, Bosworth, and White are the three leading candidates. Wouldn't you agree with that? I think everybody would. I, I think that's very true. First and ten. They'll run on first down. Highsmith battling his way to the 45-yard line. We've been talking about Testaverde and Bosworth and Brown. You take a good look at number 30, because Alonzo Highsmith is someday going to be in the backfield in the National Football League. He had nothing that time. He managed to get a yard or two out of it and could have been negative yardage. He is strong. Good blocker. He can also catch an occasional pass. Good attitude. Coaches like the way he works. Second and eight. The young quarterback from Long Island checks the defense. Down in the middle to Bratton. Bratton gets inside the 20-yard line. Era, the offensive line is holding off the rush. They're able to release running backs now into the pass patterns. He was wide open, right over the middle. We'll take another look at this. You see Testaverde comes back. The rush does not get to him. There's the throw, wide open. Right there is Bratton, right in the seam. And number 29, Dixon comes in, makes the play, but not after a large... 28-yard game. The men doing the job right now are O'Neal, Alekna, Rakosi, O'Connor, and Patchen. That offensive line for Jimmy Johnson. They are down to the Sooners' 18. It's Bratton. 
struggling to get close to the 15-yard line with Bosworth and Jones. You know, Bosworth has been quiet since a tremendous start here this afternoon in the Orange Bowl. We haven't had his number called very often. Still, Miami has had difficulty in establishing a consistent ground game. Their strong suit, without question, is their passing. And it seems to me, Brent, that the Oklahoma Sooners are having difficulty rushing the passer for one reason or another, either the protection or the fact that they may be a little tired. Well, it's second down and eight. The wind has picked up a little bit here in the Orange Bowl. That cools things down. It won't be as humid as the first half. They'll run Bratton wide to the right. He slips in. Battling his way inside the 10-yard line against Bench. Here's a good job of stretching the defense in the sense they did not adjust to it. Look at the leverage that Bratton has. 77, O'Connor makes the block to the outside. Bratton turns it inside, breaks it back to the corner. And a nice job there by number nine, Finch, of avoiding his block and making the tackle. And if Irvin had driven on in to Finch with his block, he might have scored on that play. Here is a first and goal at the eighth. Tester Verde barking that signal out. He had trouble in the Sugar Bowl. Straight quick drop. Out here to the tight end. Touchdown Miami, Charles Henry. to attempt the extra point. Perfect. The lead grows in the orange ball. Here's a look at the touchdown. Watch Henry, the end man on the line, just break to the outside. Number eight blitzes, and Testaverde picks it up immediately and delivers the ball to the outside. Number 14, Derek White, cannot stay up with him, and he pulls his way into the end zone for the second score. can't believe it. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Tonight, looking for something new? You're my camera? Last time I looked in the mirror, I was. Then you found it. Tonight on CBS, the new Mike Hammer. Era, they try to safety blitz on him that time. Yes, Sonny Brown right here. Blitzes. Alonzo Highsmith makes the play. Henry goes to the outside. Irvin drives off the defender. Testaverde picks up that blitz, delivers the ball right there to Henry. White comes over to try to make the play, but watch as Henry just drives into the end zone, bulls his way for the score. They use two different pass patterns with tight ends for their touchdowns. Earlier, remember, they had broken Roberts down into the middle in the end zone. This time, with the great block by Highsmith against the blitzing safety, he swings his tight end back out here to the corner. Henry joins Roberts in having scored touchdowns. 10.35 to go in quarter three, and the Sooners are under fire now, and he comes out again. Staff 
Stafford smacked down on the 14. The ball is loose. Miami. coming out from a yard inside and the kicking game is becoming a key factor in this game as Eric Ham able to get around behind knock the ball loose for the Hurricanes on that special team and J.C. Penny able to recover for the Canes now here is Ham 41 as I told you coming in stripping the ball out now J.C. Penny alertly pounces on the loose ball and gives Testaverde another scoring opportunity here at the 15. Miami 14, Oklahoma 3. Barry Switzer's team under fire. The Sooners have lost a fumble for the third time this season, and we'll be right back. Who says you can't have old world taste and a new world waste Old world aging and the new world's youthful spirit. Europe's finest hops in America's finest light beer. Michelob Light, old world quality from Anheuser-Busch. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can have it all. Two out of three Indy drivers rely on STP oil treatment. Because when it comes down to it, STP adds extra lubrication to reduce engine wear in whatever you drive. STP is the racer's edge. Next time you go away for the weekend, turn your weekend into a national holiday. National Car Rental now offers you special weekend rates as low as $19.95 a day. So if you're going to take off, turn your weekend into a national holiday. For every man who wears Brute deodorant, there's a woman who'll be glad he did. Because a man who wears Brute deodorant is nice to be close to. And nobody knows that better than a woman. Only Brute deodorant gives you long-lasting protection with the great smell of Brute. Hello. Brute deodorant, cologne, and everything else. Brute. It smells like a man. Great. For the last week down in Oklahoma, Brian Bosworth has huffed and puffed about what the Sooners would do to the Hurricanes of Miami. But so far, Bosworth and his friends cannot blow the house down. Instead, it is Vinny Testaverde, who is on the brink of moving the Hurricanes into a commanding 21-3 lead over Barry Switzer. After that fumble, on the kickoff, it'll be a first down on the 15 against Bosworth. Derek White, he met head on. Oh. Was that some contact there, Brent? Right here you see Bratton. Watch White, number 14, come up. Bratton lowers his head, knocks him backwards, and really puts a hit on him. Second and six. The ball between the 10 and the 11. Checks it off at the line. Drops it to Black. Close to the five-yard line. Derek White, along with Paul Milyazo and Brian Bosworth. Notice how Testaverde avoids that rush. He's got good feet. He continues to look upfield, senses the rush coming at him, moves away from it, calmly delivers the ball to outlet people. will give the Canes a first and goal. On the afternoon, Testaverde is 14 of 18 for 143 yards, and he has thrown two touchdown passes. Both times he has hit tight ends. Alfredo Roberts with the first one and Charles Henry with the second. Would you, do you realize that Bratton had shoulder surgery this spring? 
<laughs> he, sure, he sure got a good recovery the way he's hitting. Testaverde is going to come over. A timeout has been called here in the Orange Bowl. He wants to confer with the coaching staff. And so the Sooner defense will regroup. Area is so difficult in a highly charged emotional game like this when you get behind and you're on the road. The fans have stayed in the game almost from the beginning. The Sooners have not been able to quiet them down here in the Orange Bowl. Holloway has had difficulty having his signals heard. The Sooners with a wishbone, hard to play catch up. That's the key right there, the fact that Oklahoma could not afford to fall behind in a ball game like this because Miami can strike quickly. They've got a great balanced attack. They can hit the big play. And the Sooners got to grind it out. And of course, this is a sensational defensive football team the Hurricanes have. And they're going to be hard pressed if they don't hold them. This score gets up to 21 to 3. The Sooners will have really an uphill battle. Eric, Coach Johnson has inserted both his tight ends in this alignment. But he has also split one of them out occasionally down here going in. As he did on Henry's touchdown, Alfredo Roberts was split out into almost a slot formation. So instead of showing the double tight, he lines him up differently. Now this time he brings up the double tight with Bratton in behind Highsmith, and Irvin is on a right wing. A roll by Testaverde. Invest in a fund that's averaged 14.3% over the past 10 years. So a man will have something to enjoy. Are you coming, Grandma? Yes. Well, there's still time for him to enjoy it. Incentive Life from the Equitable. It's one thing to say you fight friction. It's another thing to prove it. Kendall Motor Oil did. First, ordinary piston rings were plated with pure gold. Then, a prestigious independent laboratory ran them under stop-and-go driving conditions for 5,000 miles. The results? Look, Kendall protected the soft gold. A remarkable test only Kendall has taken. Now, doesn't that tell you something? Kendall Motor Oil, for protection worth its weight in gold. It's a sport of finesse, power, and beauty. America's Polo Championship. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. Well, Era, there is the wingman, Irvin, who caught the ball. What happened on the Oklahoma coverage here? They had to break down somewhere, but watch Bratton go in the number five. Watch him dive in there like he's got the ball. Jumps up, like, and they think he has it, but by that time, Irvin has got leverage on the defender. Nobody there. Testaverde can either run it in or pass it in, whichever he chooses. He chooses to throw the football. Dixon giving chase, but he was easily bitten, beaten by Irvin. 
And it has suddenly become a long afternoon in the Orange Bowl for Boswell. As Miami has scored two touchdowns in 44 seconds. some difficulty deciding whether or not to come out. Now he'll come out, and again, he was looking down at his feet, and Collins is tripped up by J.C. Penney. J.C. Penney tripped him up right there at the 10-yard line, and down he goes. <laughs> that was a great job by J.C. Penney. He covered a lot of ground and reached out and tripped him up. There's a ground level view. There's 21 right there. Look at him reach out and trip him up right there. Great job by J.C. Penny, 21. Oh, what a great job of kicking by Seelig. He is nailing Oklahoma one and two yards deep. And on each occasion, they're hesitating back there, not knowing for sure whether or not to come out. And he's squeezing them down in the left corner where they don't have the field to run to. From the wishbone, Perry is the fullback. He batters straight ahead. Rod Carter, 91, led the defense into the fullback. Their last six possessions against this hurricane defense, Oklahoma has totaled merely 30 yards. A phenomenal defensive job here against the wishbone, which now must play catch up. Second and nine. Holloway flips back outside to Collins. He's cut off. He doubles back. Oh, look at here. He's got an alley. And Collins gets out near the 30-yard line for a first down. Tremendous individual effort by Collins. Winston Moss was giving chase along with Stubbs. That Winston Moss did a marvel. You can't believe what he did. If you see this from ground level, watch how Moss runs. Here's the pitch out right there. He decides to turn back, and it looked from up here as if he had leverage all the way down the sideline. This man can really run. Now watch Mo Moss, number 99. See if he comes into your picture here. Finally runs about. He pursued all the way across that field. What a great job Moss did. And the junior Collins leaves for a breather. Earl Johnson checks in, and they flank him. Holloway down the line with Tillman. And they fumble. The ball was loose at the 35-yard line. Miami has recovered. Here it is from the end zone. Tillman is out here with Holloway who elects to keep it himself. Before he gets it tucked up, he is cream. Benny Blades and George Myra, 36 and 45, sandwich him. And Moss had another hand on him, Era. He sure did. Great contact. That secondary is really tackling. Oklahoma has, I mean, uh, Hurricanes have the ball in great field position. First and 10, Testaverde rolling to the left. Complete. Did he hold on? Right there. What a catch by Henry. What a hit by Dixon also. I don't know how he held on to that ball. Here's another look at it. Testaverde really puts the ball in here. But watch here as Ricky Dixon comes in. How Henry held on to this ball, I don't know. Right there's the throw. I mean, that's contact. First and 10 for the Canes, the ball at the 17. Testaverde checks it off at the line. Williams. Great run. Warren Williams. With Jamel Holloway, who turned it over, watching from the Sooner bench. He shook a tackle, and I believe it was Brian that had him back there. I mean, this is good running by Williams. 
Really, they had him back in the backfield. Somebody missed an assignment, but he found daylight in there, picked up six yards. Still almost eight minutes to go in the third. Williams inside the 10-yard line. Good second effort there by Williams. He was a starter a year ago, and Bratton beat him out, and he's a great back in himself. Testa Verde taking the signal from the sideline. It was 7-3 at the half. The Canes have scored twice in the third and are threatening again. Before the snap. Let's see if Testa Verde and the Hurricanes took too much time or there was another infraction. some questions about young Testaverde following the Sugar Bowl when Tennessee ambushed him with a variety of blitzes and they climbed all over the Canes down there on New Year's night. But I think here this afternoon he's putting some of those to rest. And he is in that game actually the Tennessee volunteers were getting to, getting to Benny with three and four man rushes. But you can see here that line is doing a marvelous job of keeping out the Sooners and the Sooners look like they're tired too. Third and six. He is down at the 18-yard line, and Selig trots onto the field to attempt a field goal. The Sooners stiffen. Of course, what has to concern Barry Switzer and his staff is how you come back with basically a run offense. He has to be thinking a little bit of Eric Mitchell trying the other quarterback in this spot. Selig trying to make it 24-3. I believe it was a fake, and he stood up, and they bobbled the ball, and it'll be Oklahoma's right there. David Kentai was the holder. Era, I thought he was standing up as though it was a fake. Looked like he might, but... Uh... It was hard to tell. I looked to see if there was any receivers downfield. No one released off the line. Might have had some kind of gadget on, though. Maybe he realized it was a bad snap, too. And Stary is showing his hands that the ball was away from him. It was reaching. I saw him move. And I thought that perhaps they had something on with the score 21 3. Wishbone, car is back at fullback. Tillman and Collins are the halves. They bring Tillman out to the 31-yard line. And Randy Shannon and George Myra, 22 and 45. Confirmed. Well, we've talked about the Heisman Trophy and Jim Harbaugh up at Michigan. Long shot playing against Florida State, a tough team. Went 9 of 16 for 122 yards. And D.J. Dozier, the tailback from Penn State, 71 yards. And they're up Paul Palmer, the fine running back from Temple in a losing effort, had 69 yards. So here it is second in a long five for the Sooners. Holloway handing it off, and the fullback car is hit immediately. Bill Hawkins, 54, leading the way. So here in the Orange Bowl in Miami, along with Era Parsegian, I'm Brent Musburger. We've got number one, Oklahoma, against number two, Miami, and so far it has been all number two. The Canes lead the Sooners 21-3. They struck first, then Oklahoma kicked the field goal. It was 7-3 at the half. Then in the third quarter, within a span of 44 seconds, the Canes put two more touchdowns on the board. On the pitch, it goes to Tillman. Tillman's got an alley and comes out to the 45-yard line. And again, it was Myra giving chase. It's one of the few times they've been able to execute that triple option to perfection. They dealt it off, got good blocking at the corner, and picked up a first down. But up to now, it's been all hurricane defense playing super football. You know, well, they are 0-3 when they have played in these one and twos.
Rangers. Now they face an 0-4 situation unless they can rally. All the way down the middle. Hayes got Jackson up and look at him bust the tackle. He'll go. He's a great athlete. said during the week, let me have it 20 times. I want it 20 times. And Barry said, no, no, no. We're not going to throw it to you 20 times. Mr. Jackson, Barry may be changing his mind. You may get it about 18 more times with a run like that. Era, he is a devastating football player. He's unbelievable. Well, the coaches were right when they told me. I asked him how fast he was. They said, we really don't know, but no one ever catches him. And that was an example of it right there. <laughs> Oh, who was trying to bring him down in that secondary? Was that Kevin McCutcheon I saw try? I think it was. I think his head is probably still ringing. There's Tim Lasher to attempt the extra point. Don't you dare count the Sooners out. There's a lot of time left here in the Orange Bowl. It is 21-10, 4-15, and what a surge that is going to give the Sooners. From the ground level here, you can't see how open Keith Jackson was. There's the pass, and there's the reception. Now he shakes loose, spins off. That's Blades. I mean, he's a good football player, number 36. And he goes all the way with no one catching him. The first man that hit him, Kevin McCutcheon, he's over here at the sideline. He's asked for aspirin, Tylenol, buffer, and he wants the whole thing. And we'll be right back. To reach for something bigger. To master a more challenging world. Feel the confidence and pride of knowing who you are, what you can do. Show the world your U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. Call 1-800-327-NAVY. And unfortunately, that's the weather picture for tonight. Uh Roger is a weatherman. He knows the difference between little storms and big storms. And recently, when he saw a big one coming, the first place he went was his Honda generator dealer. Hey, you're the weatherman. I need a real good generator. And by the time the storm hit, Roger was prepared. The Honda generator. Because you never know what the weather will bring. The man called Sweetness. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. We're back in the Orange Bowl. We've got 4.15 to play in the third quarter. It's 21-10 now as the Zoomers have scored for the first time. Ball is teed up for Thompson. J.C. Penny is the deep man. He has been kicking short, but high. six-yard line, and the man who scored for Oklahoma, Keith Jackson. I said to Keith, how often do you tell Barry, throw the ball to me, coach? Um, almost every day, every hour of the day. I think I tell Coach Swisher, uh, let me do an in and around and throw the ball back to Jamel. He said, that's uh, that's that, that's crazy. We're not going to do anything like that. So you don't have to worry about the in and around and throwing the ball back to the quarterback this game, but uh, next game you have to watch out for it. All right, here he is over the middle, and watch this first hit, what happens. Oh, I can't hold on. He's gone. <laughs> Down goes McCutcheon, <laughs> and Jackson's in. I don't know. Maybe he'll be able to throw it back. It's a lot of man. 4-0-8. And they run the half back. First down, then he tests to Verde, who had tied Kozar's school record with 10 completed passes. Comes up with a running play on first down. A four-yard gain, and it is second and six. Alonzo Highsmith, the running back. He's the fullback. Mel Blatton is the tail. Highsmith comes over here on the wing. Ross Blatton on a cutback. 
scrambles to the 35-yard line. Emiliazzo, number 42, was the first Sooner defender there. This is third and two. Big play, and keep in mind that uh, with three minutes and 11 seconds left to go in this quarter, that the fourth period, the Sooners at least will enjoy the win factor, and they'll be passing down win. Testaverde will be passing, shows it inside to Heisman. First down, it keeps the drive going. He gets to the 45-yard line. Very well executed play. He sucked them in. Little shovel pass, great call. And they pick up the first down, maintain possession of the ball. Another ground level view here. You see Testy comes back into the pocket, and then he deals it off with his left hand. I mean, that's showing a little class there. And there you see a great runner by, by Heisman. Ball is at the 44 with his first and 10. Now that goes as a completed pass, so give him 11 in a row and a record. Time for Testa Verde. Make it 12 in a row as Perriman is across midfield. Down to the 49-yard line. It's Bosworth that came over there. Showed great speed that time. Right there, number 44. End zone view of it. There's Vinny back in that pocket. Looks, looks, looks. Great protection. Looks out to the right. There's the throw to Perriman. And here comes Bosworth over. Chases him down. Oh, it was an interesting replay. Bosworth was frozen for a count before he made a move on Tester Verde. Second down. Over the middle. Great touch by Henry. Oh, my, at the 31-yard line. What great touch by Benny Testaverde on that pass. Perfect. Dropped it over the linebackers. Right into the hands of Henry. Charles Henry, the junior from St. Petersburg. Here it is. Look at that nice touch. A beautiful catch there by Henry as well. First and 10 for the Canes, 1.38 to go. We're in the third quarter. It's 21-10, Miami over Oklahoma.
these games, don't you? Oh, what makes you say that? One? Nice and cool. <laughs> what about the Heisman Trophy? How much oh, do you want that for your son? Oh, I want a bear. I want a real bear. It belongs to us. <laughs> we were made for it. My son was made for the Heisman Trophy. All right, Brent, the proud father visits his son at the office. Let's go upstairs. I love it. My son was made for the Heisman Trophy, indeed. And he may have left it up here this afternoon. That time, Sealy said, I won't even give you a tough decision. I'm just going to ride this one on out. At 28 to 10. So tomorrow we'll have more action coming your way. National Football League style. How about that instant replay rule? Should we throw it out? We're going to give you a chance to vote tomorrow. 12.30 Eastern time. So we sure want you along for that. Then you want to hear what Joe Montana has to say about his recovery from the back surgery. And our games. Well, we'll tee up the big one, the Bears and the Bengals. New Orleans against the Giants. The 49ers are here in Miami. They'll take on the Dolphins. Don Shula trying to put that defense back together. Rams, Eagles, Packers, Vikings, Lions, Browns. Uphill again for the Sooners. Shannon, number 22, smacks him down. I don't think it'll be long before they'll be trying to find number 88 again. Well, I think they're going to wait for the wind that fourth quarter. It is, uh, well, it's quieted down some, but it is favoring the fourth quarter for the Sooners. And we're only 55, 54 seconds away from that. The Sooners now need some big plays, and they're capable of that. down the line. He keeps it to the lane. Out across the 30, and the little man is wrapped up at the 31-yard line. Benny Blades, 36. They list him at 5'11", and down at practice, Barry Switzer called over our spotter, Mr. James Tubbs, and said, how tall are you? And this young man said, 5'9". He said, look here at my quarterback. He stood him back to back. Our spotter was taller than Holloway. <laughs> Big things, though, sometimes yeah. come in small packages, and Switzer says that Holloway runs that triple option better than any quarterback he's ever had. Right now, he needs big plays. They break the bone, they send out one of the halves, and they run Perry, the fullback, straight ahead. They were in the same formation that they had hit Jackson with previously. I thought they were going to come back with it again, but they elected to give the ball to the fullback. One of the plays that they normally use in every game is the tight end around with Jackson. They have rehearsed a fake off of that, and they have passed rolling in the other direction. Yeah. Well, the clock is going to run out on the third quarter here. national champion. There's a long way to go, but Miami leaves it. We'll be right back after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by Michelob Light, super premium taste and less filling beer. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by MCI, communications for the next hundred years. The architect, and perhaps the calmest man I have ever been around, 48 hours prior to a game such as this. On second and long, Holloway flares one, and the Canes were ready for Tillman. Randy Shannon, 22, led the assault. Looks like there's going to be a personal foul penalty. against the Sooners. So that'll move them back further into a hole here in the Orange Bowl. In the first half, we had only one touchdown score. In the third quarter, we had four, three of them by the Hurricanes, and they lead Oklahoma 28 to 10. You know, Maybe wide receiver Michael Irvin, who's caught two of those four touchdown passes, had something when 
They said, what about this Oklahoma game? Aren't you, you know, fired up? He said, well, Oklahoma, I'm looking ahead to next week in Northern Illinois. Personal. On the offense. Broken the bone. And Shepard and Cavanis, wide receivers, come in and a single setback. Holloway to scramble. Great run. Out to the 33, but he needed 28 yards for a first down, so the Sooners will still have to punt. Play's well, really dangerous. Here he is in the pocket, doesn't find anyone open, that likes to run it. Sees a big seam. Watch him make a defender miss. Right here. Oh, he really fakes him out right there. Winchester. It's a punt again for the Sooners. Kintai and Perriman are back deep. Perriman at the 26. Steps out of bounds. And he tests to Verde with four touchdown passes. Three of them in the third quarter. And Oklahoma's scoring play was a big touchdown pass from Holloway to Jackson. Miami has shut down this fear triple option. Once they got ahead in this game, it really changed things. You well, know, Miami has faced the number one rushing team in the country. Almost 500 yards a game, and have really have done a number for over three periods of this contest. Highsmith on a nice cutback move. Gets to the 36-yard line with Dixon bringing him down. Hey, Rutgers, they stayed unbeaten there. Haven't they just been once tied this year? Army having some difficulty. Oh, boy. Hey, that's a two, two in a row. Really two in a row. Bring on another <laughs> Ivy League team. Maybe we could schedule Harvard. Second down. High school. Batter. That was Dante Jones, number 50. Linebacker. Dante Jones. TCU just can't beat SMU, can they? Oh! oh. Nice up. win. Hello? Oh, boy. Third down and three. There. A lot of poise. Look at this. Bratton oh. incomplete. He had him open, too. I thought I looked like the trajectory was going to be just right. Just overthrew him a tad. But he does it with ease. It doesn't seem to be any panic about it. It's just a matter of moving around. He has a big stride. He's strong. He keeps looking down the field. He's been very impressive today. Aaron, in this situation as a coach, when you trail 28-10 with 12-26, would you think about going after the punter and trying to come up with a big play with your kicking game? And get oh, I think so. But it looks like they only have eight men up. Got to be able to handle eight-man rush. Eagles standing on his own 20. Gets it off, and Collins signals the fair catch and then lets it bounce. Inside the 25-yard line. We'll come back with 12-14 to go. And number two dominating number one. <laughs> Hovering overhead, the Orange Bowl, the Goodyear blimp. And the captain, Drew Marshall, from Vienna, Virginia, has been up there this afternoon providing those spectacular shots. And this ever-expanding skyline down here in Miami. And a football program that is starting to ripen. They don't appear to be any fluke, do they? 12-14 to go, and they got the Sooners winning. Holloway pitches. Johnson.
Jackson comes out to the 27, with Selwyn Brown, 32, bringing him down at that point. Brown did a super job, number 32 there. He's been injured, bruised his leg again, or ankle, but came back in here, and he did a nice job of warding off the block and making the play. Era Berry has to be thinking about putting the ball up here quickly and trying to get one fast if he can. Yeah, I think he'd be better off going on first down rather than second down where you've got long yardage situation. They'll lay back on you. There he goes with a wide out, but he's still in the ground balance to the right. It's a lovely substitution, too. And Holloway over led. Stafford. It's incomplete. I simply threw the ball too far in front of him. And it is third down and seven to go with Alonzo Highsmith, that big, tough running back. He's been offering some fine blocks. I think he's got to try. Excuse me, Brian. I think he's got. Barry's got to try to get that ball to Keith Jackson again. He's such an imposing force. Just throw it to him and let him jump up and get it. I mean, he's. looking for him and under pressure that time. They have forced the sooner punt. And while the punting team goes on, let's check in with Jim Nance. Jim? All right, Brent. Some of the other outstanding performances today. In Ohio State's 600th win in school history, fullback George Cooper only eight carries, but he scored on four of those. Navy shut out Lehigh. Chuck Smith four touchdowns for the midshipmen. And in the Vatterino's big win over Montana State, Lucius Floyd, 305 yards rushing and four touchdowns. Let's go back to Miami. Where we are ready for Winchester's seventh punt. It's it off. Here's Perriman, the 32. Trying to get outside to the left, and he will not. And there's a penalty flag down. There's a clip on the play. Perriman was trying to get around the left side arrow when that clip was thrown. He's got great speed. He thought he could make it to the corner. So we'll get it marked off. We'll take a little break. And when you come back, there will be 11-12 to go in the battle for number one. Along with Eric Parsegan, I'm Brett Musburger. We're at the Orange Bowl, where Miami is beating Oklahoma 28 to 10. Let's give you a quick scoring recap. Miami struck first. Testa Verde's first of four touchdown passes to a tight end. Then Oklahoma closed to within four before the intermission with a field goal from 31 yards by Lasher. But in the third quarter, in a span of 44 seconds, Testaverde hit his other tight end, Henry, and then after Oklahoma fumbled the kickoff, the Canes came right back and Testaverde went to Irvin, and it was 21 to three. Oklahoma closed in as Holloway went 54 yards to his great tight end, but Testaverde led Miami back down the field. It was 30 yards and a 28-10 margin. Testaverde takes over again. And in the battle for the Heisman Trophy, it has been all Testaverde since the opening moments with penalty flags down. And, Errol, what are some of your overviews here on this? Well, I, I've got to compliment, first of all, the Hurricane defense. It's been a remarkable performance. They had two weeks to get ready for the bone, did a superb job. I talked with the coordinator, Dave Wanstatt, yesterday, and you could see that they had, had prepared exceptionally well. And then, of course, the offense has executed well when they got the field. ball, illegal procedure on the offense. When they've had the ball, they have ex executed well, but they couldn't have done the job without that defense stopping the Sooners. First and 15 as a result of that penalty. Out of his end zone, and he's got his tight end again. Alfredo Roberts. To the 42 yard line. A 33 yard gain for Testaverde. Errol, when Dan Marino was here earlier, 
he and I had an opportunity to chat quickly about Testa Verde, and he said the one thing that the fans should watch for is that he's got all the passes. He can throw over the middle, or he can throw this hard ball right here to the side. He said he doesn't lack anything as far as an NFL arm is concerned. Well, he has it. By the same token, the receivers did a beautiful job of running marvelous routes, splitting the zone, and having a receiver like Roberts be wide open. Testa Verde is 21 of 26 for 261 yards and four touchdowns. And he drops one off to Williams. There is a penalty marker down. Penalty flag at the 40-yard line is down. Boy, they've had some great quarterbacks here at uh, Miami, haven't they? You think back recently to Bernie Kosar. He led them to the national championship. And before that, there was Jim Kelly. He's now up in Buffalo. Howard Schnellenberger brought those quarterbacks in along with Testa Verde. And then Jimmy Johnson has kept the program going. But I'll tell you, there was a man who preceded all of them. And he's now got a son who plays linebacker. I can't believe it. Let's go down to Pat O'Brien. Pat. Thank you, Brent. His name is George Myra. They called that in the early 60s the age of miracles. What do you think of uh, your Hurricanes today, George? Well, I think Miami's got a great football team. I think they've proven it out there today. They got a great offense, and their defense have been super. They have a youngster on this team named George Myra Jr. Assess his abilities. He's having a good day, isn't he? Yes, he, he is. He had a real good year last year, and he started off the season exceptionally well this year. And uh, today I've been watching you pretty close, and he's having a fine ball game. Now the crowd is yelling, Myra, Myra, Myra here. Is that for you? I think that's for George Jr. I'm in the past. <laughs> Let's go back upstairs to Brent. All right, Pat, thank you. I, I don't think George is missing too many meals. <laughs> I don't think George would be the moderator anymore. <laughs> we, we played again. Him back when I was at Northwestern. He was really an elusive quarterback. He really scrambled, but I don't know, George, not anymore, huh? <laughs> well, the fans here in the Orange Bowl are hooting it up. They think they've got one in hand with 10.53 to go. They're up 28-10. We have holding on the offense. And it's going to be a long ride back to Norman, uh, unless the Sooners and bounce back here in a hurry. There were two flags thrown on this play. That's why we're having some confusion. Here's the other one. Head ball, personal, on the defense. Oh, wow. Automatic first down. First. Bosworth wants a little explanation. Tester really looks for the play from the sideline. He's telling him that a personal foul is an automatic first down is what he's telling him. So easy. He's one of the players is so bored he's yawning down there on the bench. <laughs> Come on, there's still 10.53 to go here. Well, he takes a big jump in that Heisman Trophy race, doesn't he? If you're going to have a game like this, have it on national television and take it right to one of your closest challengers. Testaverde back again. Look at that protection. Oh, great job by the offensive line today, oh. but they couldn't hold up forever. And Bosworth coming in brings him down, and now he helps him back up. The two men have appeared together at some preseason All-American functions here in Miami, and both of them have expressed admiration for the other player. Most of Bosworth, if you want to know the truth, is hype. He's a pretty quiet down-to-earth fellow just likes to paint his hair three different colors and wear an earring number 44 just like your average next door <laughs> <laughs> and there is Vinny remember those linebackers you know they're, they're a little bit like that era <laughs> <laughs> just very routine second down at 24 Estaverde again checking off he's got to hurry now he calls timeout he was going to be penalized. He called a timeout. And that gives the Hurricanes only one. So we'll take a break and we'll come back to the Orange Bowl in just a moment. Back in the Orange Bowl, I'm Pat O'Brien. You know, when you look at these players, you don't only see talent and speed and all that kind of stuff. You see jewelry. I want to show you some of our chosen jewelry here. Jerome Brown, first of all. And then now check out Michael Irvin's earrings. 
not to be outdone by Jamel Holloway's earrings. And the Boz, number 44 in his ear, and he talked to us. We asked him about this, and he talked to us about just why he wears jewelry. Uh, the earring is a reflection of individuality from the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, I basically say don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't conform to society. You can be your own person and still be accepted. Brent, what kind of jewelry does the Boz wear? Any kind he wants. Go upstairs. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Era, how many players of yours wore earrings? <laughs> Not in my time. Williams is stopped as he comes across the line of scrimmage. That was Steve Bryan, number 86, who whacked him down. And the Sooners Steve must Bryan have a big play, either defensively or offensively. They need to create something quickly. There's time. It's 28-10, but they've got to hurry. Well, they should get the ball back. This is third and exceptionally long yardage, 25 to go. But you never, you can, can't cannot count this Miami team out. They can strike in big chunks. Testaverde studies the defense. Third and 25. The safety blitz was on that time, and it was picked up. Out of bounds, incomplete, intended for Paramount. Boy, did the Hurricanes pick that blitz up that time and buy him some extra seconds. The blocking for Testaverde today has been fabulous. His composure is another thing that I admire. He sits right in there, looks down the field for the open receiver. This one is thrown just like how Perman tries to stay in. Ball was thrown wide, but still, Vinny has had quite an afternoon. Eagles to punt. Patrick Collins, the return man for OU. Under pressure, he gets it off. They were coming that time, and Fiegel's booms a beauty. Collins right there at the 21-yard line. A 47-yard punt under pressure, and the kicking game today has been in Miami's favor. No doubt about that. He got a lot of pressure, Brent, as you pointed out, but he still got off a dandy. Now we can check the scoreboard with Auburn. Mm. Taking it right to Tennessee. Jeff Berger, fine quarterback for Pat Dye. Lou Holtz about to win his first game. South Bend this afternoon. Sanford doing a fine job. Jack Elway to coach and John Pays a good looking quarterback. On a first down, Holloway. Oh throw interception coming back is Benny Blades he's out of bounds a penalty marker is down just a poor throw here by Holloway he just throws the ball right up in the air he was trying to hit Jackson. Jackson was delayed. And of course, Bang grabs it, runs down the right sideline. Watch him hurdle right here. Right over top of the tackler. Is that illegal? The hurdle error? It really like is. Hurdling is illegal. And there's a flag down. I don't know whether he called that or not. You don't call it very often. Let's see what the official says. Use of the hand well, on the open. That was illegal use of the feet that we were looking at. <laughs> well, Benny Blades is really a, a outstanding. He's run a 438, 4.38 40, and he's 207 pounds. I mean, this he's a real man. An 18-point lead by Miami. And the Hurricanes came into this game. Touchdown underdog. Well, this is a big step in going all the way, Benny. Well, this team has played, in my opinion, an outstanding game, this hurricane ball club. Warren Williams is in at tailback. This is Williams. Cuts it up inside with the 22-yard line. When you study the Miami schedule, it is not all that difficult this year. For example, West Virginia having a bit of a down year. The Seminoles are struggling. 
Pittsburgh is trying to rebuild under a new coach. I can foresee the Hurricanes going unbeaten and winding up here in the Orange Bowl and then playing the winner of the Nebraska-Oklahoma game. Very strong possibility. Nell Bratton checks back in at halfback. Penalty markers down. Time had oh. expired again. Lou Holtz Oops. has number one. Coach. Congratulations to Lou. I mean, that's a great win for him. Number one. He was so close in the first two. Lost him by a total of six points. And uh, looks like they may be on the move, although they got to play Alabama next week down in Birmingham. So here in the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, the Hurricanes lead the Oklahoma Sooners 28 to 10. It was 7-3, Miami at the half. Then in the third quarter, the Canes exploded, scoring three touchdowns while the Sooners had one. Oklahoma made it 21-10, and then Vinny Testaverde came back with his fourth touchdown pass of this afternoon. It has been a tremendous performance by the senior quarterback. Blatton, halfback option. He's got time. He throws it for Brown. No go. Ricky Dixon with coverage. And Bratton said, oh, I want passes. <laughs> The halfback pass, it looks like a sweep. Bratton says, I can not only can run, but I can throw. And he launches this ball. Look at him cock that arm. He says, I'm going to take your job, Vinny. Andre Brown coming down. Number 83, he's looking for the ball. Oh, it goes right over his shoulder. Oh, my. Did that hit his helmet, arrow? It looked like it might have. <laughs> Bratton still <laughs> jumping up and down. He had him one. On third down, Testaverde says, take a look, Mel. He fires one. Incomplete. Looked like that could have been a flag there. And Derek White with a great move down there in the end zone to bat that ball away. Now, number 14 was the defender. Watch this on Testaverde. He fires this ball into the end zone. Look at him scramble out. Looking down the field. Now he really drills it right there. Let's see what kind of... All right, good defensive play. Good defensive move on Blades. Knocked the ball out of way. It was white. Field goal is up by Seelig. No good. No good. Harold, let's take one more look at that halfback pass by Blatton here. Looks like it hits Andre Brown right in the helmet here. Let's see if it's the shoulder of the helmet. On his left shoulder, ball cut, looks like he's going to catch it. It does. It hits him in the mask, although White might have deflected that ball. His hand was right near the mask. Or I should say Dixon, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Dixon. And then White came White. back and knocked the ball away from Blades, Coach. He's already had four. He was gunning for number five, wasn't he? 7-19 for the Sooners. They have broken the bone, and Holloway will throw from the pocket. Complete on first down to Derek Shepard. The wide receiver uh -oh. from Odessa, Texas. A little spearing, I think. They're going to call it against Miami, I think. Looked like spearing from here, about the third or fourth guy, and I could not see the number. Personal foul, 15, first down. You know, Era, there are some games which elevate coaches' status. And this one is going to move Jimmy Johnson up in nope. the eyes of a whole lot of folks. Well, uh, everything was on the line here for the number one ranking, and certainly with seven minutes left to go, it'll be hard-pressed for Oklahoma to score 18 Personal. points. Personal foul, late hit on the defense. First down. Ball is out at the 49-yard line. Where it'll be first down. Shepard and Cavanis are the wide receivers. Holloway. He wanted Collins coming around from the wing. Collins. 
Collins with an alley. And he slips inside the 35-yard line with Blades and McCutcheon in pursuit. And there's the kind of play we expected earlier. Yeah, but he, he did a fine job of running. That should have been negative yardage. The contained man was in perfect position. Just good running. Now, you can watch it here. You'll see the pitch out right there. And I think that is Brown. Is that 98? I can't quite see the number. Jones or Brown had him dead to rights. Good running here. Avoided the tackle, and he picked up positive yardage on it. Anthony Phillips downfield throwing that last block for Collins. 6.52 left for the Sooners. All the way back. Knocked down. And that is Stubbs. Number 96 has played a great game here today. That's really the handicap for Jamel Holloway. At his sight, size, and height, he cannot see. And you see Stubbs stepped in there at six foot four, 245 pounds, batted the ball down, and poor Holloway just couldn't see downfield. Alonzo Heisman watching from the bench with 6.47, and that clock can't move fast enough for the Hurricanes now. Oklahoma will try to slow it down and get something going. Holloway slides and breaks the tackle and gets to the 23-yard line. The ball was taken away, but the whistle had blown. Steve Bryan, whose brother Ricky Bryan, one of those responsible for turning the Atlanta Falcons fortunes around. Family out of Corleta, Oklahoma. An old flock of brothers, and they're all good football players. Coach Jimmy Johnson is from that part of the country. He must have football in Arkansas. He must have known something. He was so calm on Thursday and Friday. Knew his team was going to play well. Third and one for Oklahoma. Holloway has the first down. George Myrick Jr. wraps him up. The clock stops at 619. Stopping now after first downs is important. If Switzer can punch one in and get a two-point conversion, he would pull to within 10. Holloway's had 15 carries and 75 yards. He's going to throw this one. Under oh, pressure and down he goes, and there's a penalty marker down. Did someone grab a face mask when Might he reached been, around? Because I didn't see anything else that it could have been. 98, Jerome Brown. Played a great game today. Yep. A break for the Sooners at the 6.03 mark. Let's see if it's just a five-yarder or the big one. The judgment of the official whether or not it's at Burton or in at Burton. Johnson a little worked up on the sideline. Yeah. What is it? I don't know who he's hot at there. We have a face mask, five yards on the defense, behind the line. It's enforced from the line of scrimmage. Brian Bosworth said that the one thing he feared about today more than anything else, losing. He said, I did that too much in high school. I don't want any more of that. Holloway has an alley. Battling his way inside that 10-yard line with Benny Blades there in pursuit. At the 5.49 mark. The Sooners hustling down. This will be a first and goal for Oklahoma. And they're not quite out of bullets yet, are they? No, they're still moving the football. You can see the concern of Jimmy Johnson. Next week, we'll see Iowa Michigan State, 2.30 Eastern time on CBS. Holloway having some difficulty again at the closed end here. left on that clock. 
and the little man trying to pull some rabbits out of a hat for Coach Switzer. Barry stuck right by him, didn't he, Eric? <laughs> Never once did he bring in Eric Mitchell, who's a fine athlete over there. It was Holloway's game to win or lose. He batters the fullback straight ahead. Leon Perry out of Orlando, Florida. And another number called for George Myra, who has had a busy afternoon at middle linebacker. Second and five. into the four-yard line before Myra again meets it. Hurricanes are sticking in there tough defensively. This will be a third down with the clock moving. Short of the end zone. It's going to be a fourth and goal. Jerome Brown, 98, led that charge for Coach Johnson. <laughs> Oklahoma will call a timeout. So that will give them two. When you come back, it might be the last chance for the Sooners. Fourth and goal. W-I-O-D. Hello, I'm Leona, your automatic teller. Can I help you with a student loan? No, a car loan, Leona. Fast forward. No, improvement loan. Hey. It's a General Motors car. Don't get hassled when you finance a new car or truck. Get GMAC financing only at your GM dealer. Uh, is there someone live I could talk with around here? Do we here? have one of our calendars? This is a fine calendar. We also have what they call a print calendar. If I can only find it. Today's Equitable has new life insurance ideas that can provide money for a secure and comfortable retirement. Today's Equitable, your key to financial opportunity. We have new kinds of insurance that do more than just protect your family. They can help you earn the money for your new home. Today's Equitable, your key to financial opportunity. Our new insurance ideas can do a lot for you. Talk to us. Your key to financial opportunity. If you need a truck for business or pleasure, you don't want to be taken for a ride. That's why you should come to Heinzelman's. The folks here are experts. They can put you in the right truck, whether you need a big Ford tractor, Utilimaster workhorse, Econoline, or light-duty Ford Ranger. And there are lots of Oklahoma from scoring on a fourth and goal with 4.15 to go. Jimmy Johnson leading Barry Switzer, 28 to 10. Let's see if he breaks the backfield or not to reduce the defense. No, they're staying in two tight ends in the full house. Punching them up. I'll be darned. I thought he was down over there. That was Dan Celio got inside. Jimmy Johnson can't believe what has just transpired here. They are signaling touchdown. And of course, Oklahoma will go for the two points. I thought he was down on the bobble. From this vantage point, it appeared that he was down. Now the coaches are having difficulty. Let's take another look at this one. Now watch, Holloway did not have the snap. The ball is on the ground. He's trying to get back outside. Now here he is wrapped up. On his way down, he laterals the ball, and it is scooped up. A two-point conversion. Incomplete, he wanted Jackson. So Stafford 
scooped the ball up on the bounce and took it in for the Sooners. Take another look at this in era. How about this play? Let's take a look and see whether his legs are down. It looks, it's a judgment call on the part of the officials. It looks closer than it was when I first saw it. Now let's see right there. If the official had not blown the whistle, then it's a live play. And apparently it wasn't. One time he called, blew the whistle early, early on that punt. Now look, look, he fumbles the ball, picks it up. Now he turns into the seam. He's tackled right there. Starts to come down. Deals it off. It's not a. It's not a. It's still a legal ball because you can advance the uh, pitch. As long as it's lateral or backward. Now the bigger play of the game might have been the missed two-point conversion. Had they made that, they would have pulled to within 10 points at the 4:08 mark. Now here's the play. Holloway wants Jackson, who breaks free, throws the ball, overleads him, and on beyond the end line. Now, Miami has to expect an onside kick in this situation at the 408. Let's see if they punch that ball up like they did in the uh, end of the half, where they send it up in the air and try to get down real quick. You can see the Miami is deployed for an onside kick. There's the onside. They need two scores, and it's wrapped up beautifully. That was Basil Proctor, number two, who wrapped that one up. A defensive back put in by the Hurricanes because they expected the onside kick. That is still four minutes and six seconds, Brent. We've seen Switzer on many occasions in games such as this Pull, pull him out of the fire. I've done a couple games up in Nebraska that he did it when I didn't think it could happen. But they got to get the ball back. It is first and ten, and we'll watch what Testa Verde and Jimmy Johnson decide to do. They run Highsmith with the clock running down. Oklahoma's. Two timeouts and Miami with one. You know, uh, Brent, Miami's had marvelous field position in this second half. Their average starting field position is their own 49 yard line. Boy, that missed two pointer really makes it tough for him. He trails by 12 at the 338 mark. So a combination of a touchdown and two point in the field goal won't do it for Oklahoma. They've got to get two touchdowns. That's tough going. That's 3.30. They've got to go at him with everything they can. The test of going to put one in the air. No, he's not. There's a penalty flag down. The test of Verde goes out of bounds inside the 40-yard line, but there's a penalty marker thrown back at the 44. Probably offensive holding. Could be on Bratton. He was way back as a bodyguard. The crowd is chanting a little melody toward Brian Bosworth. Clipping. And that champ was bye bye Bosworth. We hate to see you go. He's faking a little ruck, run action. Can't find anyone open. Decides to hold it. Then he finds a seam. Very wise move to get it out of bounds here. Not take any shots. You don't want to get hurt at this stage of the game. There's still a lot of season to play. What a game he's had. Oh, has he? Oof. The blitz. He's dropping the blitz. He gets away from Vickers. How did him get away? It's the second man. Vickers comes back at him and they hammer him at the 25 yard line at the 310 mark. Smart not to throw an interception there. Although he could throw it out of bounds and save himself some negative yardage. Well, we've got a timeout. That'll reduce Oklahoma's number to one. And thanks to this crew that provided us with our great coverage down here in the Orange Bowl this afternoon. 
Here we've got 3.04 to go. It's 28-16. Miami leading Oklahoma. There have been some fine moments provided, many of them by Testaverde. to celebrate here in Miami, especially if you're a hurricane backer. The folks down here are hoping that the Dolphins can recover some magic tomorrow. They play the San Francisco 49ers here in the Orange Bowl. Come to the line of scrimmage at the three-minute mark. Smith breaks free. Oklahoma with one timeout remaining. Switzer trailing it by 12. Now a blocked punt here for a great return. There's still an opportunity. Remember, they're going to need two touchdowns. Low snap, mm. but they were not going after it. Nails one high. Oh, coming around is Patrick Collins. Walked down at the 15. <laughs> he was trying to find a seam. But the Miami team kept pressuring, kept him in containment. Danny Mariscal, number 55, finally wrapped him up. 43-yard punt. They get another eight yards with a backward return. 209. And it looks like we're going to have a new number one this week. Now let's see what kind of a play the Sooners will come up with. Single setback. Hawkins has got Holloway. Number 54 stormed in on a right defensive spot. And Holloway never had a chance. What a defensive performance. We've been raving about Testa Verde, but era, this whole performance today was keyed by the Hurricane defense. Uh, no question about it in my mind. This Oklahoma team came in here averaging 501 yards. They only had 265 right now. There's enough to add on to that a little bit, but this has been a great job by the defense, in my opinion. Lavinus, the receiver. Well, they shut down a very, very explosive football team. Great team speed, big offensive line for the Sooners. But they did an excellent job of defensing the bone. They stayed disciplined. Everybody stayed where they were supposed to, warded off blocks, and made Oklahoma go the hard way. There's Barry. He's been a heck of a football coach. He's got a tremendous record. It's third and ten. Hawkins coming again. Intercepted. That one is picked off by McCutcheon. McCutcheon's inside the 15 at the 120 mark. Flag. Penalty marker down and some pushing and shoving on the far side. Breaks out. Now both teams rush over there. Oh, I hate to see this. Oh. an ugly incident. Mar what has been a fine football game between numbers one and two. And the cooler heads are stepping in there. Now 
this interception was preceded by another strong charge by Hawkins. He was coming hard from the rear. McCutcheon stepped up, took it right away, and started down the left side. And then, as McCutcheon was pushed out of bounds by Stafford, pushing and shoving broke out. The penalty flags started flying. And the officials will get it sorted out. 1.22 to go. And Brian Bosworth and Oklahoma have come to Miami, but they will return to Norman empty-handed. Couldn't quite tell from the far side, on the far side over there, what precipitated that. There was a flag that came down about two or three yards behind where the ball carrier, McCutcheon, had been driven out. And there must have been a confrontation be between two of the players. And then it erupted from there. One of the dangers in a situation like that is that a player might get hurt, A, or that somebody from the stands goes down. Gets into the middle of it. He's throwing somebody out of the game. Jimmy Johnson being informed of what transpired and which players are being tossed out of the game. information here from the referee. One twenty two left. Well, we've got a moment. Let's announce our Chevrolet most valuable players in the game. Vinny Testaverde of the Miami Hurricanes, 21 of 28, 261 yards and four touchdowns. And for Oklahoma, the big tight end who scored their touchdown, Keith Jackson, caught two passes for 69 yards and one touchdown. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Too bad we couldn't give that award to all the Hurricane defensive players because they really had a day. Well, it won't be one versus two, but it figures to be a pretty good ball game. The Iowa Hawkeyes are Hayden Fry and George Perlis, Michigan State Spartans, 2.30 Eastern time and out west. You'll see those Arizona State Sun Devils against the UCLA Bruins. Boy, the Bruins have to be shaking their heads this afternoon. This can't be the same Oklahoma <laughs> team we played. How about Minnesota? 63-0. Barry hadn't given up a touchdown for two games. He Here doesn't. today, he gets touched for four. And that look right there, he doesn't like to lose any more than I did. <laughs> None of the coaches do. Oh, stomping on the bench. The old Miami Hurricane stomp is beginning. Perriman coming around on an end around. Perriman is the match. in the end zone. And Bosworth over there on the coverage. An 11-yard gain. You know what Barry's wondering? Is Jimmy Johnson going to jam one down my throat at the minute 10 mark? That's exactly what he's thinking about right now. And the Hurricanes are saying, let's get another one. And they probably will here. They're at the four-yard line, three-and-a-half-yard line. Got another official timeout. This place is rocking, isn't it? I think there's somebody down over there. Huh? Hard to see because he's surrounded. Oh, well, yeah, there it is. Is that Perriman the receiver? Or the, uh, yes, it is. Watch Perriman. Era, he was snapped down pretty hard on see, this I side. thought there was a face mask right there. They didn't get that. He jerked his head around there. That's what I thought I had seen. That was Bosworth who had a hold of him and snapped him down. I thought he moved 
moved around rather abnormally. I couldn't him. tell, though, from that picture whether he had a hand on the face mask or not, whether he just pulled him down from the neck on the jersey. The interesting thing is that the officials missed it completely. There was no flag. Well, let's hope it's not serious. There he is. He's up and moving. Great. Thank you. 